All right. Thank you very much for being very patient with us. We appreciate um, since now that we are ready, we are opening the October 25th, 2011 um, business meeting of the school committee. Would everyone rise um, for the Pledge of the Flag? We are ready. We are opening the October 25th Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lorraine, could you please call the roll? Linda Avanzado. Here. Elboy Benson. Larry Cerisi. Here. William Mudge. Uh, here. Kimberly Page. Here. Joe Thompson. Here. Richard Welsh. Here. Julia Helm. Here. Thank you. Yeah, I will say that Mrs. Benson asked me to announce that she was unable to be here due to a, a death in her family of um, the wife of Russell Wiggins. So um, we extend our condolences to her family at this time. <coughs> Lorraine, if you could do the calendars. October 26th, Wellness Meeting, 3.30, Davisville Middle School. November 8th, Professional Development Day, No School for Students. November 8th, also, School Committee Work Session, 7 p.m., North Kingstown High School. November 11th, Veterans Day, Schools and Offices Closed. November 14th, Policy Subcommittee Meeting, 11 a.m., Central Administration Building. November 21st, Budget Subcommittee Meeting, 10 a.m., Central Administration Building. And note this is in addition to your calendars, a late edition. November 22nd, School Committee Business Meeting, 7 p.m., North Kingstown High School. November 24th and 25th, Thanksgiving recess, schools and offices closed. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, we're slated to have our, our presentation of um, Davisville Elementary School but I believe that we are, um, the person who is giving the presentation has told us that she would be a little, um, she wouldn't, wasn't able to be here quite when we got started. Am I correct, Dr. Ajay? Yes, yes we're, we're looking at around uh, 8.15, 8.30 for that okay. presentation. Tonight. Oh, we'll be finished by then. So as soon as Brenda gets here, we will make sure we start this up, um, and we're going to continue with the rest of the meeting. And like I said, when she comes, we will, we will stop everything, and we will go back to the presentation. So I apologize if you've come here specifically for the presentation. We will have that as soon as Brenda is here. Okay. If um, anyone has, wants to sign up for citizens' comments, and I will say this, um, after the presentation, we will also allow people um, to give citizens' comments at that time, too, because um, it, specifically about the presentation, because I know there's some folks who are here who wanted to talk after the presentation. So don't think just because we're doing citizens' comments now that you will not have a time to be able to talk after the presentation. So um, is there anyone who would like to speak now and has signed up for citizens' comments? Um, I don't see anyone that has signed up, so like I said, we will take that again after the, the presentation. Um, this is a business meeting, so after the presentation, we'll take comments, but we do not take comments after each time we take a vote um, for the business meeting. All right, so now we move to correspondence. <clears throat> anyone have? Yes, this is Avanzoto. Yes, uh, I received correspondence from a member of the audit committee regarding a meeting that's going to be taking place on November 4th at the West Valley Inn. Um, this is hosted by Operation Clean Government, and they're having um, Gina Raimondo speak at the West Valley Inn, and they, she will be taking um, questions from the audience. So I was asked to pass it along to all school committee members. I'm going to send a note to the town council as well. I think it's a good opportunity to be able to actually I, – I don't have the time. I apologize. I will – get you that information on the time. I know it's at the West Valley Inn, November 4th. Um, I'll email you with, with uh, further details for that. I think there's also dinner involved, so there's a ticket price. I will get that information out, but it'll be a good opportunity because she's actually going to take questions. So. All right. Well, I received um, two pieces of correspondence, one from uh, Marissa Eisner from 
DMS, and they have winners of the Be All, Be the Best You Can Be raffle, which they give to um, students and, who have done good things during the week. For the week of October 14th, the winners were Jacob McBriar and Jameson McMillan Paula, both seventh graders. And for the October 21st, the winners were Eva Car Cardavalli, um, a grade six, and Jacob um, Scarber, um, grade eight. So congratulations to them. The other piece of correspondence that I received um, was from Dr. Tom Kenworthy, and he um, announced that Hannah Zangari won the state championship in singles tennis this past weekend. And I also saw this morning in the newspaper she was picked as the Providence Journal Athlete of the Week. Um, also, he announced the Yale Physics Olympics, um, which uh, winners. Um, congratulations to NK High School students Dan Gorlick, Peter De Silva, Mark Soriel, um, Connor McMillan, and Nathan Santos. Um, they uh, came in better than any NKS, um, NK high school team has ever come. They took third place overall out of 50 teams and earned first place in one event and second place in two other events. Their teachers are Mr. Rick Powell and Mr. John Denau. So congratulations to them. Are there any other correspondence? Um, I went to a very uh, delightful lunch over at Quidnesset Elementary, and I had, uh, along with Bill Mudge and Kim Page, and we had a nice time. It was a parents take your kids to lunch. And we also had a briefing after the luncheon from uh, Mrs. Amy Clark on uh, phonemic awareness. And it was quite uh, an enjoyable and educational experience for us. Also on um, yesterday, Monday, uh, I went out to uh, Camp Fuller and uh, followed a thing called Nature's Classroom. This is something that Davisville Middle School is out there for three days. And um, I, I think th at the last meeting we were talking about how well Davisville Middle had done on their science uh, tests. And this may well be something that has to do with that. I'm just going to read you a couple of, of the many um, items that they cover out there. One is called Go With the Flow. That's about heart and blood. Go fly a kite, wind and atmosphere. Uh, fruit lab, which is fruit dissection. Uh, rock and roll, that's geology. Um, oh rats is dissection, they do dissection. And uh, weather or not, meteorology. So it was, uh, they're out there now and probably till tomorrow and it looked like a very good program. Thank you. Great, if there's no more correspondence, then we move to superintendent's report. Dr. Ajay. Uh, I don't have anything tonight for the superintendent's report. I'll be making a lot of comments about uh, Davisville Elementary, obviously, and a few other things, but uh, nothing for right now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this brings us to disclosure of executive session votes. And, um, yeah. All members were present at the October 11th executive session of the school committee except Larry Cerisi. Motion was made by Richard Wells to adjourn executive session and move to open. Motion passed unanimously. All members were present at the October 15th special executive session. Motion made by Mel Benson to adjourn executive session and move into open. Motion passed unanimously. All members were present at the October 25th, 2011 executive session except Mel Benson and Bill Mudge. Motion made by Linda Avanzato, seconded by Larry Cerisi to adjourn and go into open session. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. All right, next we have to seal the, ex um, the executive session minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> All those opposed? All right. All right, um, we are now moving on to the consent agenda. And um, I will say, why don't, before we start the consent agenda, I know that we want to pull off right away the appointment of the assu assistant superintendent. So why don't we actually do that first, and then we'll take everyone's, um, um, what they want to pull off the consent agenda. So Dr. Ajay, why don't you get and speak well, to that? Thank you very much. I'm very excited this evening to um, put before you uh, Dr. Michelle Humbard. Um, Dr. Humbard 
currently is the principal of Curtis Corner um, School in South Kingstown. It is a school for fifth and sixth graders. And, um, you know, she, she's a first-class professional. She has 23 uh, years of successful teaching experience, 10 years in administration, eight at Kernis Corner. She has a doctorate in education, and she's fully versed in, in all of the initiatives that uh, uh, our state is currently going through, and North Kingstown is definitely a part of that. Um, she has been um, a collaborative partner with North Kingstown on many different initiatives. Uh, just at recent sessions, I have uh, been at, at tables with her about uh, the Common Core curriculum that is coming our way, and, and uh, there's a, a network of uh, Southern Rhode Island districts um, who collaborate. The, the, the sessions are called Collaborative Learning for Outcomes, where administrators from those districts talk about all the race to the top initiatives that we're going through currently right now. So I know she is completely up to date with all of the kinds of initiatives that an assistant superintendent would have to work with. She has many, many years of, of successful work. In, in education and all of these issues that she's going to have to face, and, and she's absolutely ready to take on uh, the role of superintendent if the need should be. I hope that th isn't the case, but if the need should be, she is ready for it. And uh, so I am uh, very excited about putting um, Dr. Humber before you um, for your vote this evening. Um, I also want to make a comment about the contract that uh, is proposed for her. Um, as you all know, um, in, at recent meetings, we talked about the, the range for the assistant superintendent. That is a range that has actually gone backwards, um, as a lot of salaries uh, have in, in this district and, and all around the country. And um, that is no exception. And um, what I am proposing is that she be in the low range of that salary range that we put forward. So this would be um, a, a significant um, cut from that position um, in terms of finances right now. So, um, and, and with that in mind, I am especially um, happy to, that Dr. Humbert is, uh, is uh, a candidate for this position and willing to come and work with us. And right now, the, the expected start date for uh, her beginning here will be November 21st. All right. So Dr. Thornton has given his recommendation, his endorsement. That, that would be Dr. Roger. <laughs> I mean, Dr. Roger. I'm sorry. <laughs> that other guy left, though. Boy. <laughs> the fills. I was not thinking. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> All right. Uh, do, I have a, do I hear a motion? So move. Second. Um, and is your, is your motion to – I want to make sure that it's for the approval of Dr. Um, Humbert and the contract or – or is this a split motion? No, it's a uh, only one motion to um, support the superintendent's recommendation for appointment and so support the superintendent's uh, recommended contract. And I just one quick comment. I'd just like to uh, thank the uh, superintendent for working with the committee. I certainly understand his concerns with um, salary and attracting good candidates here to North Kingstown and the committee's concerns with um, the budget crisis that will continue and striking a balance between the two of those and um, um, attracting good candidates here while uh, working on the financial constraints that we have. So I'd just like to thank him for that and uh, welcome her aboard and um, wish her the best of luck. Mrs. Avanzato. just want to um, reiterate those comments and welcome her aboard and thank you, Phil, for the recommendation. Um, in terms of the contract, I just want to note that the range that we are looking at and what we've decided on I think represents more than a 2 percent reduction from where we were previously with this position, which is something we've all talked about in terms of the uh, – some of us have talked about in terms of the crisis that we're in and what we're going to have to do going forward. We don't know what we're going to have to do. I guess it all depends what we hear from the state legislature, but either way we're going to be looking at you know, serious, serious cuts. So we, we have to start with every single position in front of us. And I think we have to start from the top down. That's always been our philosophy from before, and it, and it still is. So this represents more than a 2 percent reduction. The other comment that I would like to make, and, and I'm making this comment with, with her permission, um, the candidate that's coming here, I mean, the, she um, will be declining health insurance, which is a, a huge savings to the district of over $10,000. I just wanted to make note of that, and as I said, I'm only mentioning it with her permission. So thank you, and welcome aboard. Joe? 
Uh, welcome, Dr. Humbert. Uh, I'm sure that we're going to vote you aboard, and that is why I'm explaining to you personally why I'm going to vote no, and the reason I'm going to vote no is because with the situation that we're in, not only this year, but particularly next year, I think that we should be really paying careful attention to filling top administrative jobs from the inside of the North Kingstown School Department. Um, we uh, gather my thoughts here because I'm, sh I'm shocking myself as I'm saying this. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that you're going to be warmly welcomed by this committee, but we have got to save money. If we bring someone in from the outside to fill a top administrative job, it means two things. One is we've blocked an avenue of advancement for internal people. And two is those internal people who might have been advanced, we're not able to then look at those jobs and find out if we can reorganize them and distribute those functions and duties in such a way as to save even more money. And we've looked at the numbers. We've been briefed on the numbers. And we have no idea how we're going to get through next year. So welcome aboard. Please don't be offended when I vote no. And I'm very happy to see you aboard. And I'm, I'm particularly pleased at seeing your musical background, because music and the arts are so important in the North Kingstown School Department. And I'm sure that you're going to pay careful attention to those things as well. Thank you. Mr. Mudge. <coughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm kind of perplexed here because I had some questions on the comment, that, uh, comments on the contract that I wanted to uh, discuss with the school committee in general. I'm not sure it's appropriate to do it in public, but I, I think uh, voting on uh, both the uh, accepting uh, her as well as uh, the contract at the same night is kind of uh, like the uh, Horse being ahead of the, you know, the cart to some degree. Uh, I recognize that the salaries is is uh, is uh, getting in the range where we thought that we wanted to reduce the the, the overhead for for the uh, expenses for our, our 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 administrators, consistent with the fact that you know we're asking the. Uh, uh, Staff, some of the staff to take up their 10 percent pay cut. So that's that's consistent with that. But I did have some other comments in here. I'm not sure. Is this is this a public document now? The con the contract itself? No, the the contract is not a public document. But if you have any concerns about the contract, it's open session where you would ask them, not executive session. So that the the superintendent, both the superintendents or the assistant superintendents' contract would not be public. Correct. Super, uh, contracts by are not public documents. The, there is certain information in them that would be provided to the public, but the contract itself is not a public document. Is there any information in here that shouldn't be provided to the public? Uh, what, what I'm specifically, get, specifically getting at is the pay as well pay as... Pay is a public, would be public record, and that would be something you would provide anyway, the pay. Yeah, yeah. And, and see, there are a couple other issues in here in terms of as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, travel allowance and uh, termination. We had that, you know, issue before, but notification for termination. Nothing against uh, our candidate, but I'm concerned about that, that we only get uh, uh, 30 days notice again. And I think that we should get an additional uh, notice. I, I think we went to, uh, what was it, for Dr. Uh, Oje? Is it six months, Dr. O'Shea? No, not for him to leave. It's not six months. It's... But benefits, you know, collecting benefits. Didn't he have to give us six months? Didn't we no. vote on that? It's 90 days, but you drastically changed the severance package. I, I understand, but I thought the period of time... I must be mistaken there. Okay, but this is the same as Dr. O'Jay's 
uh, contract in, term of, in terms of, you know, the termination agreements and everything? Yes, so all, all of those details are, are the same. The only difference is if, if um, Dr. Humbert were to choose health insurance, that would be 25 percent um, where I was at 20. Once I went to the superintendent, I also went to 25 percent. Other than that, those details remain the same, other than the main salary line, which went backwards. Yeah. I would make one other comment. In the application that came before the school committee, uh, some of the responsibilities for the uh, assistant superintendent was the, the technology department and, and, and uh, overseeing that and some of the other administrative functions that offloads the burden uh, from the superintendent. And uh, I am concerned that this. That seems to be uh, not one of the top. Uh, uh, the condition wasn't really addressed in the application. Uh, aside of that, that's that's my comments, and I will be voting for her. Mr. Sreesi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to keep things moving in a positive direction, but uh, I'm a little bit concerned with <clears throat> our process here. Uh, if I recall correctly, I think yourself and or the superintendent had sent a copy of a draft contract to the committee members well over a week ago and had asked the committee members quite transparently if they had any questions or concerns regarding the contents of the contract to please ask them of the superintendent or please stop in the office if there's any information they were looking to be provided. And here we are at five minutes to midnight, and now we have questions and concerns when no questions or concerns have been voiced in the past week and a half that we've had to review this contract. So um, I just hope we can just uh, move through this process with uh, a little bit of um, dignity. Well, uh, Mr. I, Welch and then Mrs. Avanzato. I also will be voting in favor of this appointment. Um, one of the things that I'd like the public to really be aware of, that this committee and the, com and the previous committee have worked very hard to control costs of personnel. And we made a change uh, in the last committee that all new administrative hires would go to 25 percent on COSIA. And when we elevated the assistant superintendent to superintendent, he went from 20 percent to 25 percent on his co-share. Uh, that happens internally when we move someone up, and it happens when we hire someone from outside of the system. What you should be aware of is not only was there a reduction in the salary of the former assistant superintendent, but there's a very major cost change in the co-share. And it is significant, almost $18,000 total of taxpayer money. So I want you to understand, not only are we getting an extremely qualified individual, but we are working diligently to save taxpayer dollars whenever and wherever we can. It was... Uh, doctor's own suggestion that she would not take the uh, health coverage. So I want, you, I want you to see that this committee and this administration is working extremely hard. That was not a qualifying reason to hire this lady. It happened to be one of the benefits. And we all need to be appreciating how we are saving our dollars and trying to get the most out of them for our taxpayers. Mrs. Alvinzato and then Mr. Mudge. Just a quick point. I won't belabor it, but um, the committee, this committee works pretty hard on things that may not always be seen by the public, like on some of these contracts with comments and changes that we've made over the last three or four years that have been pretty significant, such as what Mr. Welch was just referring to. One of those in this contract that troubled the committee in previous contracts was the length of time um, the employee had to tell the committee that they were going to be leaving the district. And, Bill, I think that's one of the things you were just asking about. And in this contract, it's substantially shorter than the problems we've dealt with in the past where it's been like 18 months. I mean, how do we know? How can we foresee that we're going to need 
you know, how can we give someone that much time? It kind of ties our hands. This is nine months, which I think is a, I think is a reasonable days. time for the employee. Ninety days. Ninety days. Well, okay, better then. I, I, I'm not sure if it, but I know it's been substantially shortened, and that's helpful for the district. And I think we've given enough time to the employee as well. So I know that's one of the points that Bill was concerned about. Mr. Mudge. Uh, thank you. Uh, Regarding, you know, uh, the comments that uh, uh, Mrs. Sreesi made, you know, this is a public process, and I don't think that I've asked anything that is not inappropriate to ask. And Mrs. Avanzano has just kind of verified one of the comments that I had. And, uh, and uh, as such, uh, I, I just question why we can't discuss things in public with the public so they, you know, know what the issues are and some of the things we're facing. Mr. Mr. Uh, Thompson, he expressed why he wasn't going to vote for this, and uh, and that's fine. But to say that we're, we we, we are ruining the process is uh, kind of upsetting to me that, uh, that uh, you have legitimate questions and they can't be discussed. Now, as a committee, they can't be discussed. That's the important thing, not just with one person or another person, but Possibly the entire committee might have some comments, okay, that we should share. And personally, I feel we should have, as a committee, we should have met to discuss this issue before it was, yeah. was actually put on the table and done it in private. So, anyway, thank you. All right. We have a motion on the floor. Um, Lorraine, could you take a roll call vote, please? Linda Avanzato. Yes. Bill? Bill's not here. Larry Cerisi. Yes. William Mudge. Yes. Kimberly Page. Yes. Joe Thompson. No. Richard Welsh. Absolutely. Motion passes five to one. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Um, now we are back to the consent. Um, the consent agenda. Um, so I'm now taking items that people want to exempt from the consent agenda. So nothing. Oh, Mr. Cerisi. Yeah, I just uh, need to abstain on uh, some minutes uh, votes that uh, you'll be taking. So for that purpose, I'm just going to exempt uh, D, all of D. And uh, I believe um, that's it. Mr. Welch and then Mr. Mudge. Uh, <clears throat> line E, 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 E1E, e, e, which is the check registered by vendor, mm -hmm. e and H in that same, which is the budget report on athletics. That's it. Mr. Mudge. Uh, e and G, G1 and uh, 2. All right. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda of the remaining items. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. The first Ms. item is um, D, D1. Yeah, I'm going to offer a motion to approve D1 and 2 at this time. Okay. Motion to approve D1 and 2. Is there a second? Second. Quick. Mr. Mudge? Some comments, please. Yes, I've recognized you, Mr. Mudge. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, on uh, page 51. Is this of the? Of the, of the agenda, page 51 of the packet. Is this of the work session minutes? This is the October. Work session. 
Okay, so it's the minutes, not the executive session minutes. Okay. First one down there. And what could you tell us what letter that is under? Three A. Three A. Okay. I yes. split mine out because it's on the different forms, so we try to kind of separate. Thank you. Uh, my comment on that is is that uh, on page uh, 51. It was mentioned that uh, regarding the uh, point of orders, that Mrs. Page, uh, Mrs. Page noted that uh, hot button issues in Jamestown and so forth and so on. Uh, and I want to make it clear that, and it's not indicated in here, that I wanted an opportunity to discuss and, and made a point of order, which was rejected by her, to rebut the statements that she's made at the school committee meeting, because I believe that they were inaccurate. And that did happen. I didn't have a chance to rebut those comments. And uh, I went, I like that recorded. If you have to go back and look at that, you know, fine. All right. Is there any other um, point to the minutes? I think I have. Uh, Good well, question. Are we on the executive session or the work no, session? No, this is the, the regular session minutes, the work session. All right. There's no other comment. You know, I, 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 I got to I catch it here. Do you have a question, Mr. Mudge? No, I have a, another comment here. Okay. It was uh, – <clears throat> I'm sorry, I split this thing up here. It was a comment in here that I had reportedly said that uh, it was 27,000. I must have uh, screwed this up, obviously. Uh, $24,000. It was a comment in here about uh, the Jamestown cost. And that, oh, look at you. I missed one. Yeah, I'm sorry. On page 50. So we're still talking 3A. I'm sorry, I, I misplaced my first page here. Uh, that was about $2,400. That was not uh, $24,000 per child. Okay? I want to make sure that we understand that. Okay, and have that correct? It should be 24. I, mean, yes, I think it was 2380 or something like that, or some number like that. I can get to the actual number if you want, but it was not $24,000 uh, per. Uh, Student. And also, I'd like to say, as far as that's concerned, was, is that I did, with Mrs. Ambazano at the bottom of the page, you know, discuss their issues. I did try to make a point of order that let her speak to the, to the, uh, and to uh, conclude her comments. Uh, I certainly believe that uh, open comments should be allowed, and that she should not have been uh, restricted from making her comments. So, I'd like that uh, be recorded in there as well. Thank you. All right. There's no other comments. Let's take a vote on the minutes. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Uh, please. Yes. But given the comments, uh, are we going to do anything with the comments? Or is it subject to the comments, or are we just going to? I think they would this? be in your minutes from today, the October 25th, 2011 um, meeting. Um, doesn't, be doesn't he need to make a motion to amend the minutes to reflect? He's not trying to change. Forgive me if I could speak, Madam Chair. I don't think he's trying to change these October 11th minutes that we're voting on right now. And your comment is that the comments he's making right now at this table will be recorded in the meeting minutes of tonight. Correct. So his comments will be recorded and in the record. Correct. You no. Know, uh, you know, procedurally, that may be the thing to do. But the thing that bothers me about some of this is you kind of lose the transparency of the comments. Because no one will take the comments from this meeting and then say, oh, they were changed, like the kind of editorial in the newspaper. Something happens, and three days later they put it at the bottom, you know, had an error type of thing. So nobody ever sees the thing. So I, I would like to have the comments inserted in here uh, to reflect accurately, you know, what, what was said at the meeting. Uh, because, you know, if you do it in the next meeting, no one ever knows that there was any, any comments, you know, to the prior, prior meeting. Okay, um, but that, that isn't what you've done procedurally. And so you can vote against the minutes. If you would like to change your vote from a yes to a no, you may do that. Right now we don't have an amendment. 
Well, do I have to make an amendment to have my comments uh, incorporated in these minutes? That's what you, that's what you could have done earlier, well, then, but you didn't. You well, I made note of the, of your, of what you didn't like, but you didn't make an amendment or ask to make them changed. Well, I, I think that that's why I asked what you were, you know, what you were voting on or not, because I said I would like to have these things changed. Did I say amendment? No. But I implied that I'd like to have the minutes reflect accurately what was said. And, and so they'll and, be reflected in and, the minutes of the 25th. And then you just jumped in and said we're going to basically, we're going to uh, uh, just do nothing. And that's why I asked the question. My next procedural step would have been then let's mend, it, mend these minutes to reflect my comments. Uh, Mr. Thompson has hands up, but did you have a procedural question you wanted to? to I, I am. Um, I had a procedural suggestion. But you okay, I'll take the procedural. My procedural is uh, to just ask the lawyer, um, Marianne, do, can we just say uh, we accept the minutes as amended? Is that possible? First because there's there's one thing in here that really is wrong. It's it's a twenty four thousand. That was correct. That, that's a typographical. It should be twenty four hundred. I mean, that's, that's a typographical error. Right. It's, it's typographical, but it's right. big. But right, it, it's a typographical error that obviously it's twenty. Uh, everybody reading it knows it's not twenty four thousand. Knows it's tw should but be. But they only well two years from now or one year from now if they look at it. If if Mr. Mudge wants to change these minutes, then he has to make a motion to amend the minutes. That's not what you did. You voted to accept these minutes. I, I never voted. I asked for clarity before she jumped into that, what that means. So if I filed up, then fine. Okay. So that's the way you want to do it. Okay. Right if there. you'd like to make sure that your vote is a no for the minutes, you may do that. Certainly is it, it is no. Okay. Mr. Cerisi, did you have something? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm okay. Sorry. All right. Um, we're done with D1 and 2. Um, but before we go on to the rest, I see that Mrs. Potter. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Streasy. I'm sorry. You guys, had, you did the yeas and the nays on that vote, and I never got a chance to up, abstain from the vote. And, uh, ah, go ahead. If, if you the, would like to register your abstention, we let Mr. Clerk, Mudge change. Clerk, could just uh, record that for the record, my abstention on that Thank vote. You. I Thank also, you. excuse me, I also need to abstain on D1. Is that? I don't know if we're voting on, I thought we were voting on D2 right now. I believe the motion was to put both of them together. Okay, I need to abstain. I don't. I didn't Apologies. hear that motion. Uh, so both the work session and executive session with uh, on the motion. Yes, I believe they were. Who made the yes. Who, who made the motion? I made a motion to approve both D one and two. You took a vote. There was yeas, nays, and I'm just reflecting my abstention from the vote. I would still like to make a comment. Last comment, and then we have to move on because Mrs. Potter is Suggestion here. going forward on changes to the minutes. Go over the minutes ahead of time, please, and submit your suggestions to the clerk. If it's something that has, was recorded wrong or that she knows was said and that's not in the minutes, she could add it. But if it's just a matter of an opinion or an argument, then that can be brought before the whole committee and we can discuss it. Um, we don't, you know, it would take an awful long time to be discussing and arguing every point of the minutes. but. Um, okay. All right. So we have Mrs. Potter here to, uh, Brenda Potter is here to give the DE presentation. Um, we're going to take a, um, if the committee could take a two minute break so we can make sure that that is set up. And uh, then we'll come back and after the presentation, we'll take citizens' comments and then eventually we'll roll back into the consent agenda. It would so. help as well if the committee wouldn't, wouldn't mind sitting with the audience because the right. screen only faces one way and we'd like you to see it. One way screen. Oh, you have one? Marianne has it. I know, we have it, but it's got the pages on it. That's the problem. Tell her when she's drunk the next time.
Am I coming through? Okay, great. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Brenda Potter. Brenda uh, works with our COSY program, uh, which is currently located at Davisville Elementary, and um, it has been a while. Uh, we've been making some plans, and we have a proposal this evening to discuss uh, the future use of Davisville Elementary School building. Um, I think you all know that Davisville Elementary School was um, closed for as an elementary school two years ago. And uh, we went to a uh, five elementary school configuration, uh, K-5 format. And since that point, um, there have been lots of discussions about possibilities for how this building could be used. And uh, so I know a lot of you are, are interested in, in terms of uh, how it would be used, what it would mean toward the, the Davisville neighborhood, um, and also what would it mean to the district in terms of finances and, and the utility of the building for um, school department needs. So we're going to go over some of those points with you tonight. Tonight what I'm asking, uh, I'm not asking the school committee to make any vote this evening. Um, there's nothing to vote on tonight. Uh, I want the, for the, our community to be able to give some feedback on these ideas. And what I'm going to ask them in two weeks is to do a couple of things. Um, one, to give us another six-week period where we can uh, do a more detailed presentation of what you're going to see tonight because a lot of the numbers are not filled in. Um, but also to consider a, a five-year agreement where we keep the Davisville Elementary School as a school department building as part of this deal so that if we do look at any long-range planning that there's a stability factor for anyone who would want to partner with us in this that they would know that the school department has made a five-year commitment toward um, the building. And I'll explain a lot of those details as, as we move along. If you could just tap the screen, please. Um, the school department currently owns Davisville Elementary School that has not been given over to the town or anything like that. And, and it does currently have some educational use. We have our COSY program in that building. The COSY program is a program that is, is, is a school department program. I think there's been some confusion about that. Um, a feeling amongst uh, people who have emailed me that, that this is some kind of outside program similar to, say, the YMCA or, or something on that idea. It, it, is, it is a school department program. It has been a school department program for, I'm thinking, around 20 years now, in fact. And so, and it is often, uh, in its uh, functionality, in fact, has serviced uh, the Davisville neighborhood um, over the years, amongst other neighborhoods. So uh, we thought it was a, a good fit. Um, for the use of that building. Obviously, all by itself, um, it is certainly not um, taking up the majority of the space in that building. So there's a lot still to go. Um, you know, like I said, in order to make this plan work, that we're, we're looking to uh, maintain possession of Davisville Elementary School to meet current and future educational needs. Um, some, you know, a lot of what we have in the future is, is not necessarily certain. You know, we look at... Um, projections in terms of enrollment, and they tend to go down. But a lot of times we look at those projections and they don't necessarily come true. And right now we're certainly not in any position to say, you know, that we would be looking at, for instance, closing another elementary school. Uh, the schools that we're using right now are pretty much to capacity all the way around. Um, there isn't a whole heck of a lot of room in any school to um, put any more programming than we currently have. And in fact, some of our schools are are pretty, um, pretty much the capacity. Um, so, you know, the COSY and what we're calling the Family Learning Innovative Partnerships, or FLIP, um, continues its 15-year presence at Davisville Elementary School and is now delivering an expanded level of district programs uh, and services on site. One of those programs is the NK Connect program, um, and that is um, um, a um, a preschool program that is happening at Davisville Elementary. And so I'm going to let Brenda take the next um, slide here and talk a little bit about um, some of these, these plans. Thank you. A lot of acronyms up there. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the COSY um, acronym. It stands for Child Opportunity Zone. It's been here in North Kingstown and at Davisville Elementary School for 15 years at least, up to 20 in its planning stages. And we're now changing or going toward a, another acronym called FLIP, which stands for Family Learning Innovative Partnerships. But we're still going by Cozy FLIP so that everyone knows who we are and where we've been for quite some time. 
COSI has always been the vehicle to help the North Kingstown School Department meet the multiple federal and state requirements in a lot of its programming. And some of the programs that we currently offer are listed right here. Um, in addition to grant coordination and leverage funding, we manage the Title I services and programming here in a, a number of different locations. We provide 21st century before and after school programming out of Quidnesset Elementary School right now. Um, we also offer parent engagement and parent development opportunities, which again are tied to Title I requirements, parent education and parent involvement opportunities. We have provided adult education in the context of family literacy programs. These were housed at Davisville Elementary School. As Phil alluded, we provide some early childhood programming. We actually, the COSI is really the first face that a lot of families meet when they enter the North Kingstown School Department. Our Parents as Teachers program works with families who have children um, prenatally up until five years of age. We also have um, our Child Outreach program. Those of you who have children in the school perhaps met our Child Outreach screener. Every child between the ages of three and five is screened before they enter the North Kingstown schools. We also have um, our Door to the District program, which is a program that helps support families that are transitioning from early intervention, perhaps at age three, into the special ed departments here at North Kingstown. We have our NK Connect pre-K program, which is a Title I funded program that is now operating at Davisville Elementary School. It's a full day universal pre-K model that is really a unique and um, recognized at the state level program. Um, and we also have a number of transition programs supporting families and children as they enter the school department and they transit as they transition from grade to grade. What we're looking to do is to, um, is to continue to use the Davisville Elementary School in a way that supports school functionality. It will be run by the school district. This would not be a town building. It will be a school department building. So um, with the, the mission of the, the COSI program and the FLIP program and the, and the mission of the school district in mind, that we would be looking to either have um, uh, a combination of of school department functionality and uh, like-minded businesses or community organizations that would come in. Now these organizations would need to work within the mission of our own programming. If they don't fit with uh, nicely within a, a school building and with the, fun uh, with the mission that we have in mind for this building, all the kinds of things that uh, Mrs. Parta just talked about, this is not something that we would want to maintain. We'd also be looking to have this done in a way that doesn't cost the district any money. Um, our goal in five years is to bring in the right kinds of tenants and to bring in the right kinds of grant money so that we can maintain this building at no cost to the district. Uh, initially, that may not be the case in the first year or two because we're going to have to build this thing. But um, as we go along, that is definitely the goal. And um, in, in one of those, those instances that I can think of, um, Mrs. Santa was unable to make it this evening because she's uh, part of a, a course this evening. But um, she was talking about how she has plans to use Davisville if it becomes available for transition services. Now, Mrs. Parra talked about transition services for very young children. What I'm talking about are transition services for older students with special needs. Uh, once they get to the high school and they're 18 and they, and they graduate from the high school, we actually still are responsible for those, for those young adults. And I was going to say children, but they're young adults. And part of um, the learning that they still need is a transition to you know, the real world and, and the world of jobs. And currently, our district um, you know, has a cadre of students who are paying for uh, out of district places, places like Perspectives and, and all other organizations that were paying money um, to help with job coaching and, and transitions to being self sustaining. This is work that we could do in our own district if we had just the right room and, um, and the right people to do it. We have the people. Um, in some cases, it would mean that certain people in, in our high school, for instance, would have. Um, a different role to play or would do that role that they're currently doing, some of it at the high school, um, would go on to Davisville. 
Um, and in other cases, it would be um, some paraprofessionals who may uh, switch job descriptions. But currently, you know, what Mrs. Santa projects is that next year alone, we could save $100,000 in, in district um, tuitions for those kinds of services. And in two years, because of the certain population and the numbers of kids involved, we could be looking at over $200,000 just for that particular item alone. So, you know, I, I'm not even sure, to tell you the truth, of all the different kinds of programs that could potentially come into the building. You know, we have done some planning about this and we have some ideas. But to give you a, a list of specifics, I don't have that yet. And that's one of the reasons I'm asking the school committee tonight to give us another six weeks. That we have um, people within the district, and Barbara Jackson is here tonight, and she kind of represents the business community and does some work with the Chamber of Commerce and, and is a business consultant to kind of look into, you know, what kinds of community partners could we pull in for things like adult education, um, partnerships, say, with organizations like the YMCA. And, and other kinds of organizations that are like-minded that help the mission of the school district um, to do the kinds of things it needs to do. As I mentioned, another um, reason for keeping this in the district it has, you know, a little bit to do with what I just talked about, but it's another good reason to hold on to this. Again, we don't know all the enrollment projections, and we don't know what's going to happen in the next five years. We have one principal in our district, Karen Seitler, who is now at Fishing Cove. She just came from a school last year that had a major problem with a roof falling in because of snow. She was a principal of that school in Foster where that, that snow issue happened. Now, if we have an issue like that where all of a sudden there's a wing of a building that un we're unable to use, we don't have another building right now that has room to take in three or four classrooms of kids, or God forbid, even worse than that. But Davisville is available, and it's ready, and, and, you know, it would take very minimal work right now to turn that back into a place where kids could go to school. So it, it's nice to know that we have it. And, and so to, to just say let's get rid of that right now I think would be um, a little short-sighted that we, you know, we may regret it. And so another good reason to hold on, on to it, particularly if we don't have to worry about the cost of, of maintaining it, if we can get partners in there to help us with those kinds of things. Thank you. So I've explained a bit about what the COSI or the FLIP programming is thus far, and I'm sure many of you are wondering what type of expansion, what would expansion look like at Davisville Elementary School. And as Dr. OJ just said, we would really be looking at organizations and programs that match the mission of the North Kings Kingstown School Department and the COSI FLIP. Very similar missions. Um, so we would really be looking at programs, even in-house programs, as he alluded to, the special ed programs that we could bring right into Davisville Elementary School. We would continue to provide some adult education. That would include academic, perhaps GED programs, and enrichment. We don't have an adult um, education program, enrichment, adult ed programs here in the town anymore in an organized way. Um, we could also provide career and job, re job readiness training computer skills, what are the skills that are needed for the workforce today? Health, nutrition, fitness and recreation. The COSI has had a long history of collaborating with the North Kingstown Recreation Department. That type of programming could continue. Nutrition, fitness, Davis has a, Davisville has beautiful walking trails. It's a lovely site. Um, health programs, getting kids moving, those types of programs that are very prevalent in the schools today. We've also talked about integrated arts programming and initiatives, local artists providing additional support in the Davisville Elementary School programming. Family learning activities, again, family literacy activities, and providing a community meeting space. We've already used the Davisville, we like to call it the gym a cafetorium. It's one of those multi-purpose uses um, where we've had some community meetings. We've invited the YMCA to do their healthy communities um, community forums, and we've had a breakfast with the superintendent, and it's a, it's a convenient meeting space, and meeting space is, is not too common here in North Kingstown. As I mentioned, you know, what we're looking for tonight is just to, to send the idea out to the school committee um, about having um, a five-year agreement to keep this as a school building 
um, also with the caveat that, the, you know, uh, that would become real if the school committee should decide to act on a more detailed plan that would come out in about 45 days or so, that we would have the time to really uh, look deeply, that we would know it's an interest of the school committee, and that would give us the incentive and give possible partners the incentive to really talk in, in seriously about, you know, their involvement in this, so that when we come back to the school committee in about six weeks or so, that we can really um, talk about fiscal impact of what this means, programmatic options, all the kinds of things that could fill up that building, uh, staffing requirements, recommendation from, you know, uh, administrative structure and oversight and all those kinds of things. Obviously, this would need some kind of a management structure, um, upkeep, you know, all those kinds of things. And so it, it gets a little complicated. And uh, again, our goal is to be self-sustaining and um, to do the kinds of things that would benefit the school district. I also want to say that in, in allowing a, two weeks to go by before we even pick up the discussion again, um, part of the goal here is communication. Um, on Thursday night this past week, uh, Brenda and I made a presentation at Davisville for uh, a, a local group um, of concerned citizens who asked me when I was interviewing for to become superintendent if I could kind of keep them in the loop. And, um, and I feel that that's very important, and I want to acknowledge that. And every move that we make, um, we are going to make sure people are kept in the loop. There's one item I, I just wanted to mention along those lines. Um, part of the research that we did for this is we looked at uh, the Westerlies Tower Street School Community Center, and that was also a Title I neighborhood school, just like Davisville Elementary as was Providence's Robert L. Bailey, the fourth elementary school. And those are a couple of models that have a similar structure to the kind of thing that we're looking at. You know, a little different because they're different communities, but um, the same kinds of transition happened to them. So we have seen those. We have heard from the Davisville neighborhood, for instance, that they would be interested in talking with um, the people who maintain those and to find out how that's been going for those neighborhoods, and we're, we'd love to do that. So we want to keep this conversation going. Uh, I know there are a number of people who are at that meeting um, Thursday night who are here tonight. I know that they want to voice their concerns to the school committee and make their wishes known. I know that that is a pretty tight neighborhood. And uh, like any neighborhood, I think they're concerned about, you know, what will come into their neighborhood and that they want it to be good programs that are going to, you know, really help the character of the neighborhood and not diminish from it. And I, and I think that this does that, while it still maintains a lot of excellent programming along the lines of, of the school department mission that work with the entire North Kingstown community in mind. So um, that's the presentation for, for now. I'm going to ask the school committee if you could come on back up. We'll answer any questions you have, and I know there are members of the community that probably would like to ask some questions as well or make some comments. This is the time for school committee members to ask questions, not only about the, the presentation, um, but also of Dr. Roger and um, Brenda Potter. So, we can have public comments first. Yes, public comment we'll have after the school committee um, comments. So, Mrs. Avanzato, uh, appreciate the um, presentation, and also Phil, your efforts to reach out to the community and have that meeting with them. I think that's really important. Um, I think, yeah, we need a little bit of time to, obviously, for you to develop this further and for us to think about this. Um, just right off the bat, a couple of quick points. I don't know if you're looking for comments, but I'm just going to, that's a little, I'm a little concerned with, with five years. That worries me. And, and obviously, a major factor here is, you know, is cost. And I can see that this plan looks like it's really making the effort to address that issue and to make this a self-sustaining situation. Um, I've always felt, and other members have said, that it would benefit this town to have other students, and this is the type of thing that needs to happen, other students coming from other areas in the, 
in the uh, state to North Kingstown and offer services at one of our buildings, special, in particular special education services, which keep our kids in district and then also help make us um, some money. And so that aspect of it I think is, is really good. I think we have to be very careful, though, about several things um, in terms of fairness. And, you know, there's a lot of things that need to be discussed and, and, and played out. So those are just preliminary comments that, that I have. Thank you. Mr. Streese. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just very briefly, we've um, been on this the Davisville Elementary School discussion for uh, um, several years now, and um, I know there's a lot of factors to take into consideration. Um, for me, I want to obviously see us stick to our mission statement of education if we're going to continue to house um, programs and services in that building that it's geared towards the uh, education of students here in North Kingstown. And unfortunately, um, we need to uh, focus our attention on dollars and cents um, here. So I think it's um, critical that we bring that building to a cost-neutral level uh, ASAP, um, and there are a lot of opportunities to generate revenue from that facility, um, and, um, and hopefully at some point turn the corner and actually make the facility a, a revenue producer. And I know that's not the main mission of the school department or the school committee. Our mission is offering education, um, but certainly if we can produce uh, revenue from that facility, renting or leasing space to uh, outside um, vendors um, who shares our mission of educating North Kingstown students. Um, and we can generate some revenue on there to um, apply to programs and services and education throughout the district and uh, minimize and also accomplish minimizing the impact to the local taxpayers with that revenue. Um, that's the point I'd like to see us get to. Mr. Thompson. I think five years is reasonable. Um, I've been over there. I've, I've met with the COSI people and I've uh, seen some of the uh, pre-K work that's going on, speech therapy, uh, very needed programs, and this is a good spot for them. Um, I think uh, also if there's a chance for us to do some of this consolidation that we keep uh, expressing our interest in but we never really are able to grasp it, somehow combining perhaps IT departments, combining payroll departments. This may give us an opportunity to have some space for, for combined uh, departments. Uh, covering the costs, self-sustaining. I would, uh, I definitely would think that it should be the, the bottom line. Uh, if we can make some money, all the better. But um, if self-sustaining, make sure that we and are including whatever bond costs that are associated with the uh, Davis, Davisville Elementary School itself, because I believe there's a bond on that. Uh, I'll defer to my friend, Mr. Mudge, to have the details on that. Um, one of the things that I noted in there was a, a very nice uh, uh, theater they call Cafetorium. And I know, having been on the, uh, the Arts Council for 15 years, <laughs> we've been like a wandering troop of players looking for a place to have our home. And uh, I think that that would make an ideal location for the uh, North Kingstown players. Um, then again, uh, let's see, what else? If the school is needed immediately, if a, if a roof falls in, let's hope it's not the Davisville Middle School roof, um, how do we get these groups out and where do they go? I think we've got to you know, be thinking about that. And again, uh, this was already mentioned, in special education, uh, this has been my mantra so far. Uh, the money follows the student. Let's bring the students back to North Kingstown. And if we can set up a, uh, an, an opportunity to do that, and um, uh, Mrs. Santa can figure out a way of doing this so that we can uh, bring that money back to this, to this town and into this school department instead of spending it in other towns, uh, I would be all in favor of that. Thank you. 
Mrs. Avanzato. I just want to make one additional comment. I know many people have asked, you know, why don't we turn this school building over to the town? Um, and I can understand where they're coming from because we're paying money to, for the upkeep of a building that, that, but it isn't closed because we have functions in that building, but I understand their point. But if you look at what's going on right now, the town has like five empty buildings right now that they're doing nothing with, including Whitford Elementary School. I feel like turning this building over to them gives them yet another empty property that we can't sell right now. Values are in the, you know, tank. And we're trying to be creative and think of, of ways to utilize this building um, that will actually help our students and help the community and hopefully break even quickly and then perhaps generate revenue. Um, I might have considered turning it over to the town if they didn't already have so much property on their hands. What are they going to do with another, yet another building? So that's a consideration I have, too. Um, just thought I'd mention that one. Hey, Mr. Mudge. <clears throat> I'm very concerned uh, about <coughs> going forward with this, <coughs> especially uh, the revenue neutral. If we could do that, I'm all for it. But I, I, I think we went through this before with Whitford Elementary School, unfortunately. And we were going to get, you know, people to come in and, you know, look at this and look at that. And, you know, ultimately that, that fell apart. I noticed here that, you know, from a cozy standpoint, we probably, what, get $100,000 a year, okay, for, you know, a cozy program from the state anyway, I guess. They're state programs. And, uh, and then I look back and I'm saying to myself, gee, Three or four years ago, we invested $3 million in that building with the expectation it would be here for 100 years, you know, we need it. So now, now I ask myself the question, well, I guess that wasn't a very good investment. You know, after a couple of years after we fixed the roof and put the air conditioning in and the you know, cafeterium and, you know, the, the uh, sprinkler systems that weren't required, you know, we have a 300, you know, we had a $3 million investment there. So we probably can't even sell the building for $3 million. So, you know, that's certainly an issue. But perhaps maybe we could look at this kind of inversely and maybe we'll say, gee, this is how much space we need as an option. I'm not saying this is the only option. And if the town wants to run these ancillary programs for the community, that's fine. And maybe we could be a landlord, if you may, for what we need. But for us to, to, to have to become an entrepreneur to keep the building there, it's, it's going to be quite challenging. And, and uh, uh, we really have to look at this carefully. We've got a, a, a expenditures that are coming up in the next few years are going to be astronomical. And whatever we do, we have to do a thorough, thorough, thorough cost analysis in terms of our savings and a life cycle cost analysis. We can bring kids in from We've got to look at that, look at the cost, and if all that supports that, that we can show on paper in a couple of years that we can become revenue neutral, you know, I'll support that. But, you know, I'm, I'm skeptical that we can, we can make it happen, but I'm open to, 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 to that suggestion, and, uh, and uh, I'll be looking forward to the next presentation in terms of, you know, uh, the actual uh, revenue costs, life cycle costs, and so forth and so on that we need to address. Thank you. Mr. Welch. I want to say that most of what uh, Mr. Mudge had to say I, I concur with in that we can't go forward unless this thing, more than break even, uh, helps pay the bills around here. I'm not in favor of. Uh, creating more uh, fiefdom, if you will, than we already have. We have core responsibilities, um, and we're going to have trouble meeting those obligations in the next budget. Um, <clears throat> breaking even is a wonderful thought, um, but our taxpayers are not breaking even. So it's a prime concern of mine that uh, before we go forward that I know that out of the gate, it's going to pay its way and then some. Otherwise, I'm not interested. Um, uh, Ned, I have a question for you. I don't recall us ever spending $3 million on Davisville Elementary. 
there was a bond issue that would have included three million dollars that did not pass but i don't recall us spending three million dollars on that school davisville elementary was part of the nine million dollar bond i can i think i got it in my budget book here i can tell you how much it was spent but it was part of that nine million dollar that was mostly for septic no it's sprinkler systems and uh yeah there's septic there's sprinkler uh there's a couple others like give me one second i can look it up air conditioning for the auditorium i didn't recall it was before me so okay thank you very much i'm done well i'll say um i'll take my turn and then we can um open up to the public just be able to speak um i was miss uh, brenda potter invited me to go up to the the robert bailey school up in providence and so um that was uh, a very good eye-opening experience in that they have a regular elementary school and then they do a lot of programming before school and after school um, to be able to use their building all the time they have a lot of programs up there that help the kids to basically not only um, be up to speed with where they need to be in school but actually to get them ahead and so one of the things that that seeing that building made me change my way of thinking because before that time i was thinking okay should we keep davisville elementary school in terms of and then what would we do with it and after going to the robert bailey school i realized that no that's not the way we want to think what we want to think of is what programs do we need for our students and if so or what programs we have we need for them then where would we house them and in knowing how we are full at Stony Lane, we're full at Hamilton, we're, we're full at Quinesset, the option is then, well, the place to house these programs that we need would be Davisville. And so that kind of changed my way of thinking of this. And part of what I also see is that not only would this building be able to then house programs that we need for some of the um, the cozy kids for some of the the parents as teacher programs that we do with this with parents it then offers our kids because their parents understand what's going on it gives them that edge up and that's what they talked about at the robert bailey school is that when the parents understand what's going along um, on with the kids when the parents are there and involved and understand the importance of this the kids succeed and so that's one of the things I also see as this being a great opportunity for Davisville to connect with those parents and say to them, this is how you can succeed, um, and so therefore your children will succeed. And that ties in with our mission already. It's not a separate mission. It's what we want to do with students already. The reason that I see this as um, I do agree with Dr. Auger that we need to make a five-year commitment is that it takes a little time for sometimes the programs to get started. And that if we say we're only going to do this for a year or two, it doesn't really give us the opportunity to get some of these programs off the ground. One of the concerns that I and the rest of the school committee that I've heard you just say is making sure that this is something that is not only cost neutral, but we're getting money back for it. And I think part of the achievement of that goal would be if we're able to put some of the life skills session in there by bringing $100,000 back, well, that's not the cost of the Davisville building right now. The Davisville building, I've heard estimates anywhere from 60 to 80,000. So obviously it would be 20,000 that we would be getting back even the first year. So, and it would be even more if we go a second year and onward. So that's why I see this as being something that, yeah, I'd like to hear more. I'd like to have the next 45 days. And like I said, it ties in so well with our mission of keeping all the programs school related so it's not anything that changes the nature of the, the, the neighborhood, but it still keeps it something that is with what we want to do for schools. Yes, Dr. Ajay. I, I just wanted to, you all to know that I concur with just about everything everyone set up here. I, I feel, um, you know, it's very important for the good of our kids, but also we have to be very realistic about the, the issues we're facing fiscally. And um, so this period that, you know, um, six weeks or so to, to do some more work, uh, I, you know, the five-year commitment would obviously be connected to um, a lot more information that you would have about how this would work out and um, so uh, we, we have our work to do there's no doubt about it to to put all the details on this and just to answer mr. Mudge's question we, we found that number since 1999 there's been 1.7 million dollars that has of, of that money that has uh, gone to Davisville 
in particular. Um, so, um, but um, I, I concur, and um, and you know, it's like I said in the presentation, it's, it's part of our, our our planning to to look into all of those kinds of issues. <clears throat> Mrs. Avanzato, and then Mr. Mudge. Uh, yes, I hate to constantly sound um, like all we're about or is, is dollars, but when you see the presentations that um, that were at the joint meeting. If any of you were there, you'll understand why we're focusing so much on that, because we're looking at potentially a $4 million shortfall, and it's frankly scary when you look at the what we have discretion over. We're talking about, you know, drastic cuts, as we've said before. So um, I see the benefit in the kind of a wraparound school programs and the before and after, but I think just we need to be careful in terms of if we're looking at different organizations coming in that... <clears throat> we think about what we're doing in terms of the taxpayers. For example, the YMCA, you know, they're a nonprofit, but they, they charge a lot for child care. They make money. So I would think we would have to take that into account. If they're going to charge a lot of money, that rev we need to charge accordingly. And, and I did discuss this with Dr. Ojean, and he was totally in agreement with us. These are just some of the things that will be worked on. I just wanted to make that point because some things have happened in the past that I felt were to the detriment of the taxpayer that happened um, at the town level involving different entities. Um, and I think we need to be careful to protect both our mission, the students, and the taxpayers, um, and keep those things in mind. I'd also like to think about moving towards offering more of our student, of, of special education services, as you mentioned, Kim, that that obviously will help us fund the rest of the programs that are in there and will help us pay the bills. Um, so just a couple of comments to be thinking about as we develop it further. Mr. Mike. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I think, Dr. Oje, that if you look at the interest and everything else, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll check this out, you'll see that it's pretty close to $3 million that, you know, we're paying what, on the bond debt and so forth and so on for those changes. But I'll, I'll check that out and, and look at that. But uh, the other thing which is just interesting that Ms. Page uh, mentioned was I, I have the feeling that I've heard a couple of different things tonight because what I've heard is we're going to implement new programs. We want to implement new programs. And I didn't think that was the case. I thought we were trying to, to, to house programs in there that we were already continuing to run. So, Dr. Jay, when we come back to this presentation, I would also ask, okay, uh, are we talking about new programs or existing programs? And are there any other alternatives that may be less costly to implement these changes? You know, that's not sure what, what they could be, but, you know, sometimes maybe you can use a senior citizen center, this or that or someplace else. So this may not have to be the only solution to the programs you want. And I think we ought to address also if we're getting any, you know, aid from the, you know, the federal government to run these programs. I'm sure in Providence, in the case of, with Mrs. Page went, that they have a, a huge, they get probably 60 percent of all the federal aid up in Providence to run these programs. So, you know, their, their revenue flow may be much different than ours, and their taxpayers certainly aren't taking on the burden. They only pay 50 percent of their, their tax bill in Providence. We chip in for the rest, by the way, if you don't, didn't know that. Okay. So, you know, absent, and it's awfully, awfully tough for a, a, a community like North Kingstown to get competitive grants because of our economic, you know, situation. We're, we're in the strata when it comes to a wealthy community, so it's very difficult for us to, excuse me, get, to, to not get competitive grants, but to get these type of loans from the federal government because they're being driven to the, to the more needy areas. So it's, it's a really a challenge you're going to have. And, uh, you know, I, I, I look forward to getting, Dr. Oje, your, uh, your recommendations and your cost analysis. Thank you. All right. If there is no further comment, committee com member <coughs> comments, I would open this up to citizens' comments. Feel free to come up to the mic and please state your name and, and your address and, and comment. resident 182 Brookside Drive, pretty much that abuts where the school is. 
I have sent every single, with the exception of two people on the school committee, a copy of an email that I'm a little bit concerned with with my neighborhood. One being, let me ask the first question. How many schools are there, how many schools are there in the town of North Kingstown? There are eight public schools. Closed. How many are closed? Two. Two. Okay, which is Wickford and Davisville? Now, why does this have to be over where our school is? Why not put it to Wickford? It's more general, more local. Why does it have to be the hub of the our Beaver neighborhood? The school department has no control over Wickford Elementary at this point. It's a, it's a town building. All right, and what is um, Davisville? Is that a town building or Dav school? Davisville is still controlled by the school department. It still is controlled by yes. the school department. My biggest thing is um, we were told a year ago at a community meeting in which several of the uh, school committee members had come that basically we would be kept informed about what was going to go on. There were no tenants in there or anything. Well, at the meeting Thursday night, thank you, Mr. Augier, we really appreciate you keeping us informed. All right, we found out that there was WIC in there, a pre-K program, which is from Crossroads. All right, why were we not notified? Why were we not given an email that we were promised a year ago to let us know what was going on? It's my understanding that the email list that Dr. Thornton was um, had then changed over, and then, I don't know, I, I saw Superintendent Auger then had to reconstitute that list. Okay, but that was because of a concerned citizen emailing, oh, I guess, Mr. Auger to say, we never got emails in almost a year. And all of a sudden now we get this email for our, the uh, meeting last Thursday. And that's, I think, appropriate timing. It's my understanding that some of these programs have been in the building since it was was not. Crossroads Pre-K was not. Okay, those are the only two. The others have been there but since. My thing is, why were we not notified as citizens when we were assured by school committee members that we would be? Yeah, I, I don't think, frankly, the committee has an obligation to notify as every little movement that's made. You know, we told the, the citizens to watch Patch, which has been excellent at putting out our entire agenda. Um, and when Davis I agree. has I been agree. on there, and our minutes are publicized. I mean, people have got to... Do their own homework, not, uh, you know. Oh, no, believe me, I understand so, that. But when we're if, assured if, by school committee I, members that something else is going to happen I, and it I, doesn't. If I could jump in, I, I just want to say, you know, I, I, I don't know how, you know, fruitful it is right now to kind of look back. You know, I, I, I feel bad that, you know, the communication hasn't been the way you would like it to be. But I, I want you to know that, I mean, I, I'm committed, and I know the school committee is committed to making sure everybody knows every move here. That's why I didn't even want for a, a vote tonight. I want uh, the school committee and myself to be able to hear some more feedback as we go along, at the very least for the next two weeks before any kind of even preliminary decision is made. And then there's going to be a lot more discussion down the road. And um, I'm committed to um, getting uh, the, the folks of, of the neighborhood at the meeting last week asked that we could hear more from, from this Westerly program and the program in Providence. We're going to try to organize that. We could do that right at the Davisville neighborhood if we need to or have those people come and talk to the committee at a, at a future meeting. And, and I just want you to know, I'm going to let you know what, you know, every, every meeting is going to be, when it's going to be, and what we're going to discuss. And also, you know, we talk about, you know, how we're going to make decisions about you know, who would be in this building and what kinds of programs. I, I would want that to be governed by some kind of an, a, a board. I mean, uh, getting a little ahead of ourselves because we don't really have a specific plan yet. But I would like to have a Davisville, uh, you know, concerned citizens of Davisville neighborhood, a, a member from that group to be on this board and to advise me and the school committee about the kinds of organizations that would apply to be a part of that program and, and you know, have it have your say that way and and you know all I can say and all we can all say is going forward we want to make sure that everyone is aware of what's going on we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that you are and like so, I said I appreciate your emails mm -hmm. and everything you've been the best thing that has happened to our school system Thank you. Um, now Kim I have a question what does this all mean with everything going over as far as November 8th you said the school committee members are going to vote on whether or not to keep the building Right, and I, I guess I, I a little bit got ahead of myself because basically what it'll be is on November 8th, Dr. Ajay will be asking us if we can have, or if he can have six more weeks. Six more weeks, that's all I'm asking for. Okay, uh, so basically it's another meeting that we can come as taxpayers or residents and be able sure. to see that too. And, and, and yeah, that'll, give, that'll give everyone in the community two weeks to kind of 
if you know, and this is for people at home watching on television, and and people are going to hear about it through you know the newspapers who are here tonight to kind of register you know their concerns to me and to the school committee, so that in two weeks we can come back and say, okay, you know, this is something that we want to investigate a little bit further, and this is now you know a very little cost that we would you know go out and and look at. All right, how? What what are the details now? What are we looking at for management? What kind of you know, specifically, what kinds of businesses are we looking at attracting to be partners in this? You know, what does it look like? Uh, you know, what are the hours of operation? Who's, you know, what, what does a governing board look like? All of those kinds of details. And there's a lot of them. Uh, you know, I mean, okay. we can go on and on. Um, so, so we're taking it slow, you know, okay. and we want community input. And, that's, and we that's appreciate the whole that, believe me, because that's all we mm -hmm. asked for. Right. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Just, uh, I'd like to follow up on one thing sure. what you said is uh, earlier I just mentioned you know we went through this with you know Wickford uh, Elementary School yes but also as you notice I said when we look at the programs we need to run for education for getting you know bring anything else to save you know the entrepreneurial thing that, to make money or pay, pay the building what we certainly have to do is look at all other options and I think basically that's what you're saying is well, we had this opportunity with Wickwood Elementary School, and we let it slide by, okay? But there may be other opportunities out there to do other things. And I assure you that... You and know, that's we're, what we're, we're concerned about, sure. is the other things. Yeah, well, I'm sure as we go through the process, I'm sure the committee is not going to just jump in and vote on something in two days. And quite frankly, I think seven weeks is too short a period of time. The doctor should get a little more time, because this is a very complex issue here. Okay, so I'm not willing to rush into this thing, and certainly you can email me, but, uh, you know, we're going to keep this as a public a public uh, issue and get comments from the people so, you know, we make the right decision. Well, that would be great. I, okay. I mean, yeah. I know I would appreciate it, definitely. Now, one other question to Kim. Um, in the email you had stated, thank God you were the only one that did email me back with answers. But you had stated something about, um, I guess, the school department is responsible for children 18 to 21 that are, um, I guess, like an IEP type of child, and that um, there's a possibility that um, something could go in there that would teach them how to wash clothes, make beds. Um, it's the life skills that um, Brenda life sk All right, life skills. All right. When a person makes a bed and does their wash, to me, that sounds like a 24-hour facility. No, no. Th this is just school. All right, so it's something that you would have the, the beds in there and they would do it during the day to learn it like a classroom? Right, yeah, and it would strictly be school hours. Okay, all right. And I'm sorry, um, Mr. Melvoid, Mr. Benson, did you want to say something? Mr. Thompson. Well, I'm sorry. Mr. Thompson, he has the different oh, name tag. <laughs> it says Benson. <laughs> sorry. Um, it's Joe Thompson, and um, I, I just remembered uh, when the building was first... <laughs> When, when the building was first emptied and all the trucks were showing up and all the furniture was leaving, I, I was on the receiving end of a whole bunch of emails from some people who lived right outside the building. And their biggest concern and fear and worry was that we were going to close the building completely and that, that it would be a target for vandals and, and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Oh, you're right. You're right. So, I mean, the fact that, that things are going in there and hopefully that they're going to be things that are good, good for the schools, good for the community. I mean, help we're not the house gonna, values too. And help the house values. You don't want a big, empty, you know, industrial-sized building no. sitting right in the middle of your. But if you would um, take my email and um, and I'll do everything I can. The, the the difficulty with communications is it's not like a regular school. We don't have like a PTO. Uh, right. We don't have like uh, the these. Uh, Link, uh, what's the link thing that you send out? Uh, list the listserv. Yes, we don't have the listserv. List list you know, yeah. the, the, there's no more. There's no more parent group. There's no structure right. of people that we can actually communicate with. So uh, I agree with you. Dr. Auger is doing a great yes. job. He's collecting names. He's collecting emails. We'll do the best we can. Keep in touch through Patch. Send somebody. You know, have someone come to the school committee meetings just okay. to take notes because we're going to be dealing with this issue for quite a while. Okay. All Thanks. right. I appreciate your help. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, Welch. Just Excuse had me. something he wanted uh, to say, Mr. Carol, before you leave. <laughs> I hate to keep you up there, but in That's order okay. to, in order to answer some of your questions, uh, were you here when they closed Wickfordell? 
Wicked Elementary. I've been in the um, living on Brookside for almost 12 years now. Okay. Well, that was a learning experience for the school committee in this town on how not to close the school. Now, okay. when we closed Davisville L, it was the then superintendent Phil Thornton's uh, quest, if you will, to make sure that he took a year in, in which to work with the community to let them know what was about to happen. Now, <clears throat> we're still trying to get better at this, so if you okay. will bear with us, everyone on this committee wants to take the time to make sure that we do it correctly. Are we going to, you know, solve everyone's issues? No, we're not. No, you never will, we're but not. I mean, that's all that we ask is that you just keep the lines of communication open. I just want to clear up one thing, though, that, I, that you, you said, and I just want to make sure that you're not right, and, and I, I am on this point. Uh, the the pre-K program is a federal program that we're responsible, required to do. Uh, Superintendent uh, Oje, it's not just Crossroads, it's the entire town, isn't it? For NK Connect? No, for the, for the pre-K at, uh, at Davis Villa. Yes, that, that was, that was uh, it was formerly housed at, at Crossroads, in fact. Okay. And, that, and that was one of the reasons um, it was unavailable to be happening there because of the building that was going on. So that was one of the reasons that we felt that the Davisville Elementary But it's not just for Crossroads for residents. Um, it, 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 Brenda, you can help with that. A any, anyone who's Title I eligible, right. whether they're Crossroads right. or, any, or anywhere else in the community. What, is that income donated? Okay. So just, it, just grant, to grant funded. Okay. We are required by federal law to have it, okay? If the, if, what is it, age three, I believe? Um, again, my experts over here. Yeah. And I thought a lot of the towns did away with that with the pre-K. It's, it's, it's a federal requirement. We have to do it. Oh, all right. Yeah. So I just wanted to, you know, No, 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 that's, that's fine. So, I appreciate that. You know, that. you go along and you think that you got, got, the, got it right. I wanted to just make sure we both had no it right. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. We get a clear. Are there any other speakers on this issue? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brenda Potter. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thank you. Okay, we're going back to the consent agenda, folks. And we left off at <coughs> item E1. Um, I am going to make a request. We had a couple people. Um, Mr. Welch exempted some items, and I know Mr. Mudge exempted this. When we vote on this, this item, if we could just vote on E1, so we're voting on all the reports, um, rather than taking them as individual. So, Mr. Welch, I'll let you go first. You had a question about check register by vendor and also budget report athletics. Okay. Um, I have contacted um, the superintendent on a couple of items on the vendor that I have questions about, um, and I think that we need to have some discussion about this on, on future agenda items. One is the $6,720 um, for the Principals Association. Um, another is the... Um, uh, the $2,400 for the NK Administration Association. I would like to know where the uh, emergency generator is for that we bought from Ray Z's for $4,100. And the right-of-way corporation van that says Ara Van, is, was that federal money or was that town money? I can answer those questions. Um, uh, on the Principals Association, the dues, uh, at least for the statewide program, is covered in the Principals and the Administrator's contract. Uh, this was a committee action that was approved, yeah, well, I believe roughly two months ago when we, when we researched the minutes. It was part of the request from the Principals Association for reimbursement. Um, the emergency generator was uh, quite frankly a, a last minute decision just prior to Irene after listening to Rhode Island Emergency Management Agency. Um, at that time we didn't know what was going to happen. We were faced with the opening of school and we had a very old uh, emergency generator unit that we used for the gas pumps. Uh, rather than be caught without any backup uh, we purchased a portable generator that we could use at both the data center and for the gas pumps as, if needed. Was, was there one other? Yeah, the Aravan. Uh, yes, the Aravan, that was, that was also a, um, a 
uh, school committee action, I believe, one or two meetings ago, and that was our money. That was not local funds. And, and just to speak to the first two items you asked about, Mr. Wells, the Rhode Island Association of School Principals dues, um, that is a, a, a tremendous organization. I, I was part of it myself when I was a principal. It's a professional development network and, and you know, um, a professional organization, obviously, of, of principals in the state. Um, done a lot of great learning myself through that organization. Um, in fact, I was their assistant principal of the year at one point. And um, the, um, the NK Administrators Association, I, I'm not as uh, familiar with that, but I do know that both of these items are, are contractual as well for the administrators in the district. My reason for bringing it up is that we need to be thinking along the lines of some of these things in our budget um, are, are going to be targets because we're looking for so much money. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Mr. Welch, did you have a question about the budget report athletics? Yes. Um, as part of our budget um, that we're now in, it was required uh, of the athletic department to cut $30,000. And we've yet to know that that has been cut and what it, what is being cut. And I'm just getting concerned that we're getting further and further into our budget. And I don't want it to go, um, you know, uh, assume that it was done and it never was done and the money gets spent. So um, I want to know, I want a drop dead date when we're going to know what was cut. Well, I can, I can give you a report uh, two weeks from now. I, I have a plan to meet with uh, Mr. Marcello to talk about those details in the next few days. So, Thank you. Mr. Mudge, you exempted uh, E1? Yes. Uh, go to page uh, 64, please, in your handout. Could you tell us what report that is? Your E1B. Page 64 of the so this budget is presentation, the, the school committee agenda, whatever you want to call this, what we say. This is the city, Page town, 64. North Kingstown. Okay. Yep. Not everybody else's agenda is is numbered the same way yours is. So that's why I'm asking which report. Is it the budget itself? Is it yeah, the, the school the, fund the, budget the report? The, the second page with the numbers. E1B. You got it. You got it. With the, no, 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 the grow? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking the city town of North Kingstown school fund budget report fiscal year 11. Yep. Mm -hmm. Monthly. Go ahead. The town council in, in 2011 appropriated $55,571,351. Mm -hmm. You say we have a revised budget of $56 million or the difference of federal stabilization funds. I don't recall the appropriated budget ever changing from the town council. So what, what how, how, do we, how do we explain that we have a revised budget of an additional $500,000, which was never, you know, approved by the town council? Can I, can yes, I just ask, uh, I'm, I'm just confused, Mr. Mudge. I don't know what that has to do with G1. Is that the number e one? It's E. It's E. E1. Oh, I, I apologize. I okay. thought we were on the personnel okay. items, and I'm just totally so. thrown there. Okay. Um, when the fiscal year 11 budget was passed at the Rhode Island General Assembly level, they approved it with the use of ARA funds to offset the costs of education in Rhode Island. We were told to report through our monthly deficit reports to the state the use of that ARA funding through this vehicle. Uh, so that's why you see um, in that revised budget number the ARA funds. At, uh, thank you, but that doesn't answer my question. The town council approved $55,571,000. They did not approve $56,063,000. It's a budget process the town should be going through. And, you know, we didn't do that. And that's one of the things that, you know, I've been, you know, hopping on for a period of time. 
Similarly, and I had asked this question at the last meeting, okay, that in fact in, in 2011, the, the school department, okay, in 2011, we had basically a $55,571,000 budget. We actually spent $60,500,000. We spent almost $5 million more than we had appropriated to us. And I had asked this before, I think that Dr. J also, is that do we, do we have to go through, which I believe we do, the town council for these appropriations when they change? And I think if you look at the town charter, it says when an appropriation changes, we have to go to the town council for that approval. And again, I, I'm bringing this up because we've got a new budget process coming up. I want to make sure when we go into the fiscal year 13 process that we know what, you know, the regulations are. And again, this falls back, by the way, quite frankly, to several years ago when we didn't identify $500,000 a year of Medicaid revenue in a budget. Okay? So uh, I, I'd like to really get an answer to that question in, in terms of what, you know, our responsibilities are in complying with the town charter and the state rules, state law. And I don't care what the Department of Education says to do with money. We have a, a way to handle the money that's appropriate and comes into us. And we need to comply with that. And similarly with the uh, uh, 12. You know, I, I think I can, I can answer that question by saying, you know, I, I'm not, you know, as, as savvy as uh, Maybe you might be on, on the accounting issues, but certainly not as much as Mr. Draper. Um, but I, I do meet with uh, Mike Embry regularly. Uh, I know that this document that you're looking at is known to him, um, and I, as well as the other members of the town council, I have not been told by anyone that uh, what we have been doing budget-wise is improper. Except for, been told, uh, except for you. Yep. Okay. I uh, haven't been told by an auditor, haven't been told by the town, so, town solicitor or the town manager that there is an impropriety here. We share these numbers with him. Mm -hmm. He shares his numbers with us. And, and this is the only place I'm hearing that there's something wrong. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm going with the information it? that I'm, I'm receiving, and, and I, I'm, I'm not concerned. Well, don't, don't you feel there should be a concern that we say we're spending $58 million and at the end of the year we spend $60 million? Don't you think we should be concerned that we have an enterprise fund that we don't, you know, we don't approve and then we've gone into debt for, for five or six years of, you know, $100,000? I'm saying compliance. I'm not trying to, trying to harass anybody. I just want to be compliant with the federal and state and town ordinance. Well, like I said, I have not been told by any federal agency, town agency, or anyone of any authority that we are not being compliant, just so you know. Okay. And, and I ask you if you look in there. So I'd like to make a, a motion that, okay, that we have a compliance audit for the school budget to make sure that we are compliant. This is not a forensic audit. We do, we do have an, a an audit of our finances. Of our finances. And, and I, I last, year's, last year's audit, there was, there was not a problem. As you recall, Dr. J, I am not asking for a forensic audit. I'm asking for a compliance audit to make sure that our budget presentations to the town council are compliant with federal, state, and local regulations. That's all. So, I'd ask for a second for that. I'll second it uh, in order to uh, bring it up for a couple, a little bit of discussion. Mr. Cerisi, then Mrs. Avanzato. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to be very brief on this. This is a um, consent agenda item, first of all. Second of all, getting a little deeper into this, as Dr. Jose alluded to, um, this has been an issue for Mr. Mudge for quite a number of years. Um, prior to his first run on the school committee, and, you know, we've vented this with our administration. We vented this with our legal counsel. We vented this with the town manager. We vented this with the town council. We vented this with the town solicitor. We vented this with the auditor general's office. We vented this 
with the Department of Education. And we, we've been through this numerous times. And I'm sorry, really, I, and I'm not trying to make light of this or trying to mock anyone. I'm sorry if Mr. Mudge's opinion is different than all those organizations' opinions. We've been asked the question point blank to all these agencies. Are we out of compliance? Are we doing something that violates federal, state law? Is there something that we're doing that's out of compliance? We've basically taken a list of these same questions that he's presented for the last 10 years and asked those questions to these outside bodies, and we've received the same answer back. The committee can vote or however they would like. They could discuss this until the sun comes up. Well, how about the Medicaid not, issue? Excuse, excuse me, Madam Chair. How about the Medicaid Let issue? Let Mr. Me, speak. Madam he, has the he has the floor, please. There were problems, certainly, under the past administration, and those problems were rectified through an audit. Mrs. Zavazzaro. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, I'm certainly not going to put any more time into one individual's agenda, and I'm not going to put any more tax dollars into one individual's agenda. I think the superintendent was pretty clear that all these questions have been asked and answered for the last 10 years, not only to his office, but to all these state other state agencies. So, and th th please, this is not personal. This is not an insult. This is not an attack. This is just a simple matter. You need to move on from some of these issues, please. Well, I'd like to respond. Mrs. Avanzato, first. Well, I concur with the previous comments. We did ask those questions of everyone. Um, doesn't mean they necessarily are all right. I mean, I've seen in the past where they've been wrong, but, you know, at some point there's nowhere to go. <laughs> you know, the FBI or, you know, what higher authority to get a definitive answer? Or the state? They're not exactly, their books aren't exactly uh, lining up themselves. So I don't know about any answer from them. Um, I think in terms of the enterprise fund that you were talking about, Bill, um, I'm assuming you're meaning the cafeteria. Yeah, fund, what's what's which we separately audited. It, it was yeah. Student well, student activities account was audited by the school committee, fully, and um, we did separately pass the cafeteria fund and transferred the money openly and transparently, as was not done in the past, to sh so that people can see that we didn't we did have a deficit in that account. And we checked with our legal counsel on that repeatedly to make sure we were doing it right, because I concur that they were valid questions. The other question that you have about the totals in the budget, I don't know if that's the CRP money. Um, we've asked this question before and received the answer before from our counsel as well. Um, I, I don't know where, where it goes from here. Uh, Mr. Mudge and then Mr. Thompson. This is something I gave the committee and the audit committee some four or five years ago. It's the latest edition. This is the federal the federal accounting for local state schools edition 2009 the latest one it's pretty specific in there what should be in a budget and we should be complying with x y and z just like the enterprise funds okay is that school committee never approved a cafeteria enterprise fund budget never approved it if you did i humbly say that i missed it but you never approved the budget at the beginning of the fiscal year and you would never have approved that with a negative number that was given in the last three or four years. And you cannot do that from a accounting and a fiscal standpoint, approve a budget that's negative. So you would have had to appropriate the money at that time. And that's what I mean by compliance. Okay? Number two, Mr. Sreesi, I've been told many times that I've been wrong. For four or five years, I fought the issue on $500,000 of being hidden. Medicaid money that was never, never provided, never in the town audit from 1999 to 2004, four million dollars never showed up. And anybody wants to look at this, please follow up with it. Four million dollars expenditures from 1999 to 2004 never showed up in the audit, never showed up in a budget, and was not even on the books of the town. Would not report it. The money was never reported. And when I look at some of these other things, I, I go back and I look at the regulations, and the regulation is very clear. The town council must approve all appropriations, including grants. So they still don't do that. We still don't approve 
uh, the enterprise. We set up an enterprise fund, for example, for gate receipts. That's inappropriate. All we've got to do is look at the federal regs. There is no such thing as an athlete. I don't care what the school, the State Department of Ed says. We're taking $30,000 or $20,000 of revenue and we're saying we're collecting that for ball games. And that's an enterprise fund. An enterprise fund is an activity that pays for itself. Bum, bum, bum. We fund the football team, the baseball team, the basketball team. That's not an enterprise fund. And all the revenues come back, and what they should have done is come back to this department as they, as they, they should have, as they should have, they, as they were in the last several years. We took that out, so we squirrel that money over. We don't have a right to do that. And this council, this group, didn't approve that. We didn't approve that. We don't know what we don't know. And that's why I'm saying, I'm not saying for forensic audit. Let's look at a compliance audit. Let's look at the regulations. Let's look at books, you know, the government puts out, standards which I tried to get adopted, which was not, and find out what should be in the budget, what is our obligations. That's all I'm saying, because we know. They found out $500,000 a year wasn't being shown before, and finally we got it, it moved into the budget slowly. So it can't be that far off. Mr. Thompson. I don't know um, enough about the auditing process to know the difference between a forensic audit and a compliance audit. Um, I do know that we've had an audit has been going on. Uh, if the town pays for it, it's by a company called Braver. Um, they did a part of their auditing process was to come into the administration building and with a few minor glitches in being able to uh, understand what was going on, we were able to uh, at least come in and meet the uh, individuals involved and uh, introduce ourselves. And I felt that it should have been an in-briefing and a little bit more of a understanding on the part of the school committee as to exactly what they were asking, and that would have been a help, but we didn't get that. So, uh, but what they did do was they sent to me, and I assume to everybody on the school committee about maybe two months ago, three months ago, uh, an open letter and asked us to give them any questions that we had, send them any information that we felt was uh, uh, of a problematic area. And uh, I remember quite distinctly, now this was at a, at a point in time when my friend Mr. Mudge had undergone a uh, pretty serious uh, physical uh, situation. So it's, it's perhaps the case that he was not able to uh, get this in. However, um, the opportunity was given to us, and I took advantage of that opportunity. Now, I don't know whether the things that I sent in to them, whether they looked at them or not, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing the annual audit when it does come out. And uh, I think that's the one that I'd put my money on. Uh, Mr. Cerisi has listed all kinds of op <laughs> organizations all the way up to the to the top and uh, to me if you've got an official audit that's being made on an annual basis that's paid for by the town and part of their audit is to come into the school department and to look over your books and look over your your numbers and if they come out and say that you're okay and you're in good shape I'm pretty much willing to 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 go on that I'm going to stand on that uh, and not ask for even more. So That's exactly what happened last year, Mr. Thompson. You realize they came in, did their audit, yes. not one gig. Yes, I, I know. Okay. And, um, I, and I don't know how much it would cost for this compliance audit if this is a separate issue or separate item. Uh, I don't have the money to spend on that. I'm sorry. I really don't. Um, so uh, and, until I get something from this braver audit, coming to me that's, that somehow says to me that, um, oh, gee, this $491,880 uh, that you've got here was not uh, accounted for some, you know, in proper fashion, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretty much assume that, uh, that, that this is public information. Um, it's in our packet. It's, it's there for the world to see. And, um, and I'm okay with it. I, I seconded your motion. Uh, but I'm going to vote against it. Thank you. All right. So we uh, have a motion I, on the floor. Yeah, and comment, um, please. No, you've already please. commented twice. Well, no, there's been two other um, people that said we something. We spent that about the last time we did 
Point of order. I'm going to rule you Point out. It's now my turn to speak, and you yes. have spoken. We have had an audit that has been done by Braver when we had a student activities um, audit that was done a few years ago that was $45,000, as I, as I remember. And every year we do approve the deficit um, to the cafeteria fund, and then we decide to move the money over. So we are – it is separate transactions. Separate vote from the budget. And so, as Mr. Cerisi is reminding me, it is a separate vote from the budget. But you never so approve the budget. all of these are done – and we do approve the budget. No, you don't. I'm going to ask Ms. Um, Lorene to now take a roll call vote. Uh, point of order, please. What is your point of order? Point of order is we, we haven't got all the information out. And I would like to say right, in 2011, gonna, uh, there was overrule. a major glitch. Thank you very much. You know what the major glitch roll was? Roll call vote, please. We My didn't have saying. the Jamestown revenue no. audited. Okay? The money that should have gone to the town. The auditor never caught that. Okay. You've had your say, Mr. But Mudge. I, it is now time to take the roll call vote. So you, I'm asking you to quit speaking. Roll call vote. Don't want the, you don't want the facts, do you? No. That's right. Joe Thompson. No. Richard Welsh. No. Linda Avanzato. No. William Mudge. <laughs> yes. All right. Do I have a motion now for to approve E1? So moved. Second. Okay. No. All those uh, in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Okay, we now have G, um, G1. Do I have a motion to approve G1? So moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Mudge, you had exempted this. Can you ask your question? Why weren't these items budgeted before? These were approved by the school committee at a former meeting about a month ago. Okay. And do we have do we have a list, uh, Dr. That, that is listed on your attachment, by the way. Uh, my my question was, do we we were going to prepare and maybe I, I missed it. Okay, in here, that uh, what how much money have we uh, dipped into the school capital reserve, excuse me, the school fund balance to this this point? You know, in our budget process for this year's funding, I believe it's approximately two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, in, in, in that, thank you. But uh, I would like to say I'd like to see a report that shows someplace in here that, you know, because you know you don't see it, you don't see it in these numbers here. Of we had to dip into the capital, you know, our, our reserve funds for two hundred thousand or five hundred thousand. I see no accountability of that any place. So. Uh, in the future, again, that's why I pointed this out, is that I want to see where we stand or some sort of report on our reserve funds, in including including uh, school capital reserve reserve funds, what the amount of money is that we have in those funds, and I want to, on a monthly basis as well. Because I don't want to, I want to make sure that we know exactly what we have done by approving X, Y, and Z. Uh, you asked for it point, on a monthly basis. We put it in the last packet bill. Order, What's your point of order? This is, this is again, this is the consent agenda. We, this item can be certainly be discussed when we get underneath the 11-12 school budget. This, the, we're getting into a discussion on the school budget, which we should yep. have, and I'd like to have Fine. if we ever reach that agenda item. All right. Okay. This the, let's bring this up during school, um, school, school budget. We have a motion on the table. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. No. Okay. We now come to G2. Do I have a motion on the table? Do I have a second? Uh, G2. Do I have a second on G2? I'll second the motion. So Mr. Mudge has seconded G2. Yes. Okay. Mr. Mudge, you had a, a question about the advisors? Uh, you know, and this is not about the individual either. Foot, football chilling, $517. Okay, National Spanish Honor Society, $470 for advisors. When were they hired? And, I mean, football season's halfway over. Is, is this young lady, you know, substituting for somebody else, or has she been, you know, already, you know, uh, functioning in that job since the beginning of the year? I don't know the answer to that question. Fine. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of approving G2, say aye. 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 All those opposed? 
Motion passes. All right. So now we get to unfinished business, 2011-2012 school budget. Dr. Roger, do you have anything to add? Not at this time. No, not at this time. Mr. Sarisi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just have a request under this agenda item, actually. Um, before we we um, we really head into um, looking at the proposed budget for the 12-13 uh, school year, um, I would request from the um, superintendent um, that we have a presentation, um, whether it be from him or uh, Ned or um, our special ed director Rachel Santa, um, on the CRP. Um, year to date on the CRP as well as a presentation on the proposed CRP for next year prior to its submittal to the state for approval. I'd like to see the draft of that prior to the submittal to the state for approval. Um, we These are um, federal funds. Um, Prior years, we usually averaged around four and a half million dollars in those federal funds to support various programs and services for students. Um, this past year, I think we were knocked down to about three million, uh, so we lost a million and a half dollars of federal revenue there, um, and still have the mandates of providing a lot of these programs and services, um, which we lost a million and a half dollars of revenue to provide. So. Um, I realize this is a separate item from our um, state and local funding, but uh, I'd like to see a year-to-date presentation on that, um, as well as a presentation before it's submitted for the following year. So I just ask that um, the year-to-date one, um, obviously sooner rather than later. The other one, I think we, is it May that we submit to the state for approval on that? May, June. So yeah. I think we got plenty of time before we uh, need a presentation on that. I'm sure it's not even drafted yet, but I just wanted to put that on the table far enough ahead of time. So that's, that's my only request. Thank you. Um, Dr. Ajay, did you want to comment? or? No, I, I, I don't need to comment I, except to say that I'd be happy to provide such a presentation. Mrs. Avanzato. Uh, yes, I actually wanted to support the request for a running tally on the um, fund balance and Mr. Welsh has brought it up a couple of meetings ago, and we did, we have been given an update um, by Ned at every meeting. I mean, he has been keeping us uh, very much informed on it. It just would be nice to, you know, see it on the paperwork, or I, I'm not sure where it would be easiest to submit it in the committee's documentation. Or it, one, one thing I can tell you, is, with the exception of um, action by committee, whereby the audit through the audit process, uh, they're. they're generally aren't a whole lot of changes to fund balance throughout the course of the year unless there's specific action taken. Um, but yes, yeah, there's updates I can I can provide it of course. Okay. Just one more, I, one more quick comment. Suggest something. Just, just wait. Uh, Mrs. Avanzaro has the floor. I just wanted to say thank you to Ned and I wanted to thank Dr. Roger for the amount of detail that we have in our packets that allow us to ask these kind of in-depth questions, which, frankly, I don't hear being asked at the town level. We delve into the details at this school committee. I mean, sometimes it's very painful, but it's all being looked at. And I don't, I just don't see that happening in other places. just wanted to make that comment. Mr. Much, did you want to uh, Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment that Mr. Sabinsana's comment. You know, we could just simply add it to this sheet. I mean, this is not sacrosanct, so we, we just have that because, you know, this really doesn't represent all our expenditures here. Okay, because those numbers don't show up. So they could they could be added just to the sheet for us. I know it's a state document, but we could say, you know, expenditures of, you know, uh, uh, school revenues is a line item on there. It'd be very simple. And that's what I was referring to by possibly a monthly, uh, you know, uh, accounting of that. Mr. Welch, uh, I have two questions. The um, $491,000 in stabilization money, <coughs> uh, does that go in the undesignated cash fund? That, that 491000 for fiscal year 11? No, that was used to offset the cost of our uh, busing through our... Mm -hmm. Which wasn't that budgeted for? It was... 
the way the state did it last year is they use that as an offset to their contribution for education aid. They did that in, in fiscal year 10 and fiscal year 11. But let me just, just so I understand, uh, that money didn't show up in our budget request to the town. Correct, because it would it would not it would not be part of our general funds. So we were planning on paying for the transportation costs with that budget, and now we have four hundred ninety-one thousand dollars that you are applying towards busing, which means there's four hundred ninety-one thousand dollars in the budget that is not designated anymore. No, no. If you look if you look at our budget for last year, it only reflects the general fund amount. In other words, the, the in round numbers, the total busing cost was 1.2 million. Of that, 491,000 was removed, so leaving us with 700,000 dollars in general funds commitment, and then the 500,000 was was moved over to this IRA fund. Okay, <clears throat> I need to have a conversation with you Good. afterwards on this because it doesn't make sense to me. Okay, um, I'd like to know when we can expect recommendations from the budget committee. I guess I should be asking this on the on the next 2012 2013 on proposed cuts. Um, I'll quickly pipe up um, on the budget committee. We did briefly discuss those on Monday when we had our meeting, um, but we um, didn't go into any great detail other than what Dr. Roger has put out thus far. So. We're generally planning on following the the normal budget calendar. I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure to tell you the truth what that would mean in terms of uh, when I would be making a presentation to you all, but um, I can get back to you on that. <coughs> all right. Mr. Mudge. Uh, Ms. Walsh, you were referring to that 491. That was the 2011 budget, okay? Uh, and those numbers are all rolled up into uh, basically – I think you'll see that that was uh, uh, the state offsetting the uh, state revenues with federal revenues. So it actually it's a revenue received through the state and the federal government because they, you know, wash the hands of it. So that's why it's so tricky to understand, you know, where the money's coming from. I've got some information I can certainly share from you. And that's what is it's important about this is because we really don't know what the numbers are Okay, and you'll find that that in fact the fifty five million six five seventy one for last year was in fact okay the appropriated money and that included that that swap okay so i i I totally agree with you that there and that's why I think we need more granularity in where the money's coming from and I got some handouts i'll I'll certainly give you to show you for last year uh and by the way, see, what happened was, and what really saying was, we had a $491,000 surplus last year because when we paid for the busing, paid for the busing out of the federal surplus money, then that was an expense we didn't have out of our taxpayers' money, okay? And we received some $10 million plus on, on, on revenues last year from the state. So I'll follow up with that as well. And that's what my concern is about all this federal money that comes in, okay, to the community. I might as well handle these out. And I'll hand it out. This is all the federal money that came in. I'd like to submit that for the record. And I will give one to Mr. Mr. Well, it's, it's all the federal money that came into the federal to the town of North King, Kingstown last year. The top money is what, and that goes, and that's broken down by, that is broken down by other details in terms of salary, benefits, where the money went, okay, and that's an explanation of where everything went and, and what funds were covered, okay, what funds and, and how the money was even spent. All right. Do we have anything on the 2012-2013 budget, Mr. Yes. Tracy? Actually, Madam Chair, I just had one last brief request as uh, part of my last request. If um, before that presentation is given on the CRP, if if we could get the um, the submitted and approved CRP for the year that we're currently um, operating in, 
prior to that presentation so the committee members can have an opportunity to review that um, package prior to its presentation. That would be uh, greatly appreciated. I'll make sure that information is in your packet. Thank you. All right. 2012 2013 I, I, yeah, I, school budget? No, yeah, I have a question. Mr. Mudge? If you ask go a to your packet, okay, uh, on page. Okay, can you tell us what item number this is or what report? On page 13. And what report? Uh, it's is on the uh, correspondence. your packet page. I'll put 13 would be uh, 1F1A. Like my page. Back to the no. <laughs> it's, it's Back to page 13. 2012, yep. it's, in the, it's in the correspondence it's section. In the correspondence. With the budget, in, it's the budget data I, I put together because I had a few questions there. You see, I had this is for next year's budget, this which is, we have this, not been given. No, no. This is the, this is the information that I uh, extracted from the budget, and I included it in, I meant to include it in uh, last week's agenda, and I gave it to uh, the Secretary to put this in. If you look at your, if you look at your enclosure, okay, for correspondence, you'll see there are a whole bunch of sheets in there. They should have been printed on an 11 Eight and a half by uh, 14, but they weren't. Um, however, however, in the packet, they're, they're in here is page 13 of the correspondence. Yep. Okay? Yep. So, with a couple of questions I had, uh, and the, the, first, the first one was, I, I beg your pardon, if you'd go back to, excuse me, 1F, 1A, that's page... Uh, yeah, what's it, what are your questions, Mr. Mudge? Okay. So the question was, and, it, and, and I hope I'm, I didn't miscombobulate the uh, information here. Uh, line item 73 in that packet, we, we show retirees, and maybe my numbers got filed up here, and we benefits of something for $117,000 uh, for the budget, 117650 for fiscal year 12. And I'm wondering... Were that, is that correct or incorrect? The account number was 02001, you know, in the, quote, the location column. Uh, no. Mr. Mudge, I, I think, I think your, your so, question is maybe a very valid one, but it's so specific that I think this is going to take more time than the okay. committee is going okay, to be able fine. to answer. I'll, is this something you could, yeah, you so could, you could you submit it. to the superintendent in written form and then get back to us? Because... Fine, I'll do that. Let's go to the next one then. Let, well, next, uh, then well the next. all of your questions about this grid are going to be very specific. No, this, and this, very, one we, this one we've and addressed very before. Difficult. You're anticipating what I'm going to ask, please. On page 1F1A, and the next page, whatever the Don number is. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. 13. Mitch, but I think only you and Mr. Thompson have agendas that are printed. The rest of us have it electronically. Well, and to be able to see the page and the line that you want, when I'm, I'm looking at. I'm sorry. A lot of very okay. small print one is going F to be very difficult. Okay. Now, the question is, again, and I asked this and I didn't get an answer, and it's on both page uh, 12 and 13, okay, for Davisville. We show in there for, for FY12, $324,000, okay, as a negative number. And if you go to page, okay, 13, whatever that <laughs> It's on 1A, EF 1A. Okay, you'll see that under Davisville Elementary School instructional teachers, we listed $324,000 in this year's budget, a minus $324,000 for teaching. And I'd like to get an answer I as to <clears throat> what that number is and what does it mean to the budget. Um, as I've said before, that's the number we applied last year to breakage. And the reason we applied it to Davisville Elementary was to clarify that our estimated breakage amount 
was in one place so that we could point to it and say this is what we're estimating for breakage in FY12. Um, I do understand that that's been questioned before. Uh, we tried to think of different alternatives to present that so that we weren't burying it. Um, because of the movement of union personnel uh, through the job fairs, although the, non the certified personnel, I believe, are no longer going to be in job fairs, but that was a recent change. There's no way for us to, to point to a direct line item and say this is where we will have breakage. Uh, we just are not able to do that um, until the school year gets rolling and we know where people are assigned and who's going to retire and what kind of impact that's going to have on specific locations. But look, and, and if, I can, if I can take you back on Mr. Draper's comments, um, when Braver, uh, the organization for the audit, was here um, during one of my breaks from work, I went across the hall and with Mr. Janelle, Mr. Draper was not here because he was out on a family matter. We asked about that particular item because I knew it was of a concern to you. The uh, head of the auditing team did not seem to think that that was any reason for concern. She said that that is actually something that is done in other districts um, and that it was better that we did it that way in order not to be hiding the money in any way. So um, I don't, again, have not heard from anyone that that is a matter of concern and we specifically asked the audit, uh, the person leading the audit, and didn't seem to suggest it's a matter of concern. If we get back from the audit that it is, we'll make a change. But we're trying to do the right thing by making sure people know where that money is. And so, and, and so far, the, all the indications we've gotten are that that's a good practice to do. Well, so until I hear differently, I think we should continue doing it that way. Well, I, I'm going to call we Mr. A, Welch, and then me. I'll call Mr. Thompson, then you can have another turn, Thank Mr. You. Mudge. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say this is not the first time Mr. Mudge has brought this subject up, and it's not that I disagree with his right to bring it up, but I think uh, I'm going to make a motion that uh, Bill submit his questions in writing to the superintendent to get them answered. Um, we need to get going. Second. We have 25 minutes before he we're says, done, and we haven't fin we're nowhere near finished on our agenda. Okay, there's a motion on the floor and a second. Oh, I thought Mr. Thompson was going to speak, and my son. <clears throat> well, he only, just, only if it's on the motion on the floor. Okay. Otherwise, okay. Bill? Take a, um, a roll call vote on the motion. Larry Cerisi. Yes. What's the motion for? The motion is that you submit your questions in writing to the superintendent. William Mudge. Uh, I have. I'm sorry? Kimberly Page. Yes. Joe Thompson. Yes. Richard Walsh. Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Mudge, what was yours? That, no? I, my voice I have. Just to let you know, I'm meeting with the auditor, and I'm going to give him my, my questions, you know, in writing and present it to him in writing to discuss some of these things. And we gave this letter, and yes, I was relaxed, and I, whatever, I didn't get my questions to him, so I've called, and I'm making an appointment to provide all these questions to him. Mr. Thompson. It just seems to me on a, a, a case of first impression that if you've got a, a figure like breakage, that that should be a very common figure in Rhode Island school systems. And the fact that we're sticking it up in Davisville Elementary School just doesn't look right to me. So I would like to get an answer to this, and I'd like to find out if there is some state figure auditing number that we can simply stick the breakage in so that we don't have to keep dealing with this question over and over and over. It doesn't look right to me that we're sticking it in Davisville Elementary School. All, all, all due respect, Mr. Thompson, the question has been asked over and over again because people have decided to ask it. We've answered the question over and over again. Uh, if, if, the, if you don't like the answer, there's nothing we can do about that. I've, I've just told uh, Mr. Mudge that I even checked it out with the auditor. She said it was okay. So I don't know what else I can do. You know, I don't know the details of, of every fancy auditing practice, but I think I'm doing my due diligence in asking about this at the request of Mr. Mudge. Never been told by the auditing team that this is a problem or any other auditing authority that this is a problem. Not the town, not the state, not the federal government. 
And I've been told, in fact, that other districts do this as a way to make sure that we're not hiding money. Yeah. So I'm okay with it. And, and I'm, I'm sorry that other people are not okay, but to say that we never get the answer is simply not true. You've gotten the answer, just not happy with Would it. Would you give me that answer in writing, please, from the auditor? In writing? Well, it sounds like you're going to talk to the auditor yourself. Well, so if she wants to give it to you in writing, that's fine with me. Superintendent, the account number it should be right. is 999. If you look at page 27, that's where you have all the other things. It's called to be allocated. It's in your account. Okay, we are now going to move on, Mrs. Avanzato. This speaks to compliance. I just want to make a very quick comment in terms of the transparency of the breakage. Last year during the budget process, it was on every sheet that we were handed out by, by Phil Thornton. In previous years, under Dr. Halley, the breakage was hidden. No one knew where the breakage was, how much it was, what we did with it. And in every single presentation, it was clearly stated, it was transparently talked about, the amount was right up front. Now we've asked about how we're accounting for it, and the auditor is saying that it's That's it's okay. I just want to make the point oh. that the number was right out there. That but, but it really it was wasn't, Linda, until I brought it up. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to oh, find yes, it. it was. Well, the 324? It the 324 was never identified before. Mr. Mudge, you haven't been recognized. I'm going to ask if the committee is at this point ready to move on to um, the next item for vote, the pension reform resolution. Sure. So move. Okay. Second. All right. Let's take a vote. To Comment, move. please. Move on to um, yes, Mr. Mudge. My my question on that was the on the, uh, on the pension reform. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, we are taking a vote whether we're going to move that onto that. So I then, you, you then you can ask your question. Okay. Sorry, what's okay. The, motion? the motion to move on to pension reform resolution. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, I just have one quick comment. Yes. Thank you. Um, I am going to, uh, and I'll show. Which which just item? To move on to the pension. Oh, I'm, I apologize. Wait, wait, yes, no, I, I apologize. Okay. Yes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay, so we're now on to the pension um, um, reform resolution. Um, you received in your packet, yes, Mrs. Avanzato. Well, I'm jumping the gun. But Go ahead. Are you asking for no. a motion? Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask for a motion. a motion to approve the resolution requesting pension reform, approval of the pension reform at the State House. If I have a motion on the floor and a second. Um, the only thing I would ask is, uh, do we want to make this more specific to the legislation that is specifically before the um, legislature right now? What we were given by um, Tim Duffy, our, um, our, help me out, what's Tim Duffy? Uh, the head of the Rhode Island Association, Association of School Committee. Thank you. Yes, he is our lobbyist. Um, so my question is, instead of just making the general one that he gave us, do we want to make it specific? Mr. Welch. I had a conversation with Mr. Duffy this afternoon. Asked him if there had been any changes in his proposed resolution since he submitted it to us and since it came out prior to the pension reform being given to the General Assembly. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we had the most up-to-date up uh, resolution in front of us. He assured me that there have not been any changes in the resolution. I asked him about the situation that was brought up uh, at the Town Council School Committee joint meeting regarding <clears throat> the municipal pension funds of uh, some of the cities being included uh, <clears throat> because I was concerned that uh, we, uh, the non, uh, how can I say it, the non-city uh, taxpayers uh, who would be, could be affected by the municipal pensions that are not part of the state program, we, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that we would not be paying uh, for their problems. Um, the, the, uh, draft res the draft legislation as it's been presented um, does not include those municipalities and it will not cost us any money. That issue, the issue that they were concerned with, the cities were trying to get the General Assembly <clears throat> to legislate that their um, COLAs, the Municipal Pension Fund COLAs, would go away like the State Pension Fund COLAs. 
And the, the deal there is that the, the cities have contractual relationships with their pension funds and their pensioners, and <clears throat> the state pension program is legislated by the General Assembly. It's not by contract. So the, the point being that uh, if they're going to get a change, they're going to have to go to the General to. Assembly after the first of the year. He recommended that we uh, leave this draft the way it is and pass it as it is. I've also spoken to Charlie Stam today. Uh, I tried to reach the town manager to find out if they also had a resolution. They were given one last night. The town manager never got back to me. I don't have a copy, but we probably should also consider uh, voting on theirs when it becomes available. Thank you. All right, so we're looking at, um, we have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Okay. Comments there, too? Um, well, we don't have a second yet, so. Lorraine, we, we just have the motion, right? We don't have a second? Um, I do not have. Oh, Joe Thompson, you seconded it, right? I don't think I did. Okay, we're looking Would for you? a second. Did you second me? Huh? Did you second me? I, 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 who made the motion, Lorraine? It was Linda. I motioned. Oh, Ms. Linda Avanzano. Then I seconded it. Okay. So Mr. Oh, well, <laughs> second it. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Joe. I mean, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> Mr. Joe. <Sorry. laughs> people do call me that. Um, I just want to point out information on the resolve that the blank school committee, I would take it that's NKSD. Correct. Uh, respectfully request the Rhode Island General Assembly enact reforms to the teacher and municipal employee systems. Will this be understood by the people who are receiving this from us? that we're talking about Gina Raimondo and the governor's plan that they have just presented mm -hmm. at the state because I know there's going to be a lot of arrows aimed at that and I'm in favor of the one that they're presenting. So uh, that's why I'm just asking because how do I know what, how to vote, yes or no? Is that, is that what we mean by this resolved, that particular paragraph, next to last paragraph? If, if I might give my interpretation of it. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think it's more directed at don't do nothing. Please do something to correct the pension plan because it's it's going to change. It's not too specific. You know, you, if you get specific on it, then you know, does it have any value? Oh. Okay. So that that would be my impression okay. of it, Joe. It's already changed. I think they had the municipalities in it. And they thought they until someone came up with a legal opinion that they can't be in it. So, Mr. Mudge. Uh, I was following up on this thing, this, uh, with the email. I was show you, took the words right out of my mouth here. If you look at the Smithfield Public Schools, you know, what they said in there was, resolve the Smithfield School Committee respectfully request that the Rhode Island General Assembly enact reforms to the teacher and municipal employees system that mitigate the cost to school districts and cities and towns and further above. So I had the same question is, That's what plan? Question. Yeah, right. So. So what are they really referring to? What plan? Whose plan? My plan? Your plan? Okay. Uh, uh, are they re referring to, uh, in fact, the judge's portion being there? Mr. Mr. Welsh just said correctly that, 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 you know, in fact, the governor probably disagrees with what's happening. The governor wants to roll all these uh, municipal plans in together. I don't know how that would affect it, but certainly we're not signing up for that, nor, nor do we want to. So, uh, you know, I want to make sure that we don't misinterpret this and maybe we should be a little more specific, like Mr. Wells says, and say we support the Gina. Up. Is her name Romando? Yes. We support her plan. Nobody else is at this time. Do, do, Mr. Mudge, do you want to make a make amendment to amendment, make this make amendment? similar to the Smithfield resolution, only with North Kingston in there? No, I, I would just like to, to change it to say we support the. We plan that Gina Ramondo has submitted. Now, we're not going to support all the variants. We don't know what the variants are. We, you know, there's 10,000 different things going on. So I think we should be more specific, like Mr. Wells said. And I would, I would make that my, I'd like to amend, them, amend this to include her specific want, proposal. I don't think we want to put in her name because it's, it's, not, it's not technically from her. What's a Raimondo proposal? I would, Mrs. Avanzato. I just have a suggestion before we move forward on amending the motion or seconding that. Um, I understand the concerns about 
what we're signing on to essentially like i don't know that i'm going to agree with everything they come up with i think we just the idea in this though it seems to me is just to say you need to take some action to address this we can't really get more specific than that right now and if we put a particular plan name in there we may not agree with those details so we just say look take action we can later pass another resolution as they get closer with the actual legislation supporting and maybe even then you know picking and choosing what we do and don't support they i may would, not want to support it. because we're no. being asked right now by tim duffy they need the support up there at the state house right now he said asap he wants something from the school committees and i understand your concerns but i'm thinking that we need to just get something out there that says look we support substantial reform and then we can maybe do it again you know with well, more specificity. substantial reform fine but i i think we we just don't want to give somebody a blank check to say, you know, here it is and we're going to support it. All right. So Especially we have a motion on the floor and a second. Um, let's take a roll call vote, Lorraine. This is as, as written. Yes. William Mudge. Uh, no, not as written. Kimberly Page. Yes. Joe Thompson. Yes. Richard Welsh. Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. Larry Cerisi. Yes. Motion passes five to one. Thank you. All right, let's go over our policies. The first one, Madam yes. Chair, could I just make a recommendation that we all pay attention to this as it moves through, and if any of us catches something that we think we need to uh, get the attention of our elected officials, that we uh, make an effort to contact them. <clears throat> I think that will cover us on okay. your concern, Bill, as it is mine and, and everyone else's. Sure. Thank you. Good. All right. Um, I'll go over the, the two policy. Can, er, yes. Can we, can we make a statement about CIP? Oh, yes. Go ahead. Uh, we, were, we were contacted by the Rhode Island Department of Education uh, to note that we are scheduled for Board of Regents hearing on November 3rd at 4 p.m. That is to uh, consider our approval of uh, six point four million dollars in capital projects that's consistent with the CIP documentation that was uh, approved by the committee I believe about a month ago um, the Board of Regents as, as I believe the committee is aware um, got a change in direction from the General Assembly in the, in the last session where there was a moratorium implemented on all construction uh, when that was done uh, the only projects that are allowed to remain are those that are of immediate health and safety concern. Um, in that category for North Kingstown, we have roughly six and a half million dollars of items. Uh, the biggest among them is the Davisville Middle School roof. Uh, that is one of the projects. Um, we wanted to bring that to both the committee's attention and the public's attention uh, because it will be helpful if people are present at the Board of Regents hearing to support that. We know where that meeting is. It's room 501 at the Rhode Island Department of Education building. Can we get the list of the items? I'm sorry, Madam Chair, without asking for. Yeah, I, I can. I, I uh, recently sent that to the uh, facility subcommittee for, for consideration, and I'll uh, forward that to the committee. And Mr. Draper, could you make sure that you give us the um, send us out some of the, the time and um, that sort of thing so that we have all that? Okay, we'll do. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move on to policies. Um, the first policy we have before us today is uh, a first read policy, and it's policy IMG service animals. I want to make this clear to the committee that we are not wanting people to start bringing these animals into the school. All right, um, this policy is more or less the time when somebody starts asking us if they can bring the service dog into the school that basically then we have a or a horse yeah yes a or horse, horse um, that that we basically then have a policy say only under these conditions um, this this came up to us when um, Mrs. Santa went to a conference this summer and um, various things were brought up and so this was not a policy that was written by the committee. This was written, um, um, this was a pr written by a uh, professional. It, it does follow the standards that we, we need to have because if a student has been given um, 
um, or basically qualifies to have a service animal, we really can't turn them away. And so this just merely says that if they are going to bring an animal into school, that they would have to follow certain guidelines. Um, it's not, we're not voting on this today. It's just a, a first read. Um, I do know from firsthand experience that our, my, the former district that we were in in Washington State, there was a student with a severe peanut allergy, so severe that he was going into anaphylactic shop very, on a regular basis. And so the town raised $5,000 to get him a service dog, which he was then allowed to take into um, the, sc the school district. So that's why I'm saying this isn't something that's going to be somebody just bringing in Fido um, because they want a dog with them to be at school. This would be very specific things, and the dog would have to be qualified. And obviously, these are very expensive animals to begin with to get the qualifications to meet the service dog. And so that is why we're also saying and if you ask to bring in Fido, Fido better be trained um, as a service dog by Fido better meet all the qualifications, Fido better have all the shots, and there are very specific things that it needs to have. So I want the committee to know that we're not advocating that these animals be brought in, but we're saying that if somebody comes forward with a specific plan from a physician saying that this is a need, that then we are prepared. Other questions? <coughs> Davinzato. I just want to point out, if, you know, very briefly, that if anybody knows anything about these service animals, extraordinarily professional uh, training goes into these animals, and obviously no one would be asking to do that. As long as they qualify, then, with a disability, then they certainly welcome to bring their service animals, just as they, by federal law, anywhere, including our schools. And I, and I think it's good that we have these guidelines in place, you know, just to give us the outlines of what, but... I think you'll find that anyone who has a service animal, those animals are already highly up to date, trained, all of it. So I think it's good to have it in place. Mr. Mudge. What was, the, what was your comment, or comment about a horse? It's in here. Read it. Miniature horse. Yes, the policy I, I, does I, include I miniature horses because miniature horses, and actually, um, I think you were all given the supplemental service animal additional. Service horses are about the same price in terms of, of how they get trained as a service dog, but service horses are larger. So if you would have a student who is six foot two and needed a horse for, or needed something for stability, the service horse actually works better than the service dog. The service horse has a longer lifespan and than the service dog. So there again, we're, we're not, we're not telling people to bring these into school, but we're saying that if someone comes before us with a disability and they have the service horse that meets all of the requirements as our policy and as required by law, that then we want to have the policy in place. This, 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 listen, I, I support it, okay? But I'm just questioning out loud is that does this mean we would have to modify or even pay for the pay for the no. the, the no. or some, no, else? No, we would not be paying for this. And how about accommodation? Suppose we need a bond for the loss or something. No, no, that, this would, would be. Would we have to do that too? No, the policy specifically says that the student with the disability has to make sure that I mean okay. it's theirs, but they have gotten it. Is that something that the school district would fund? nor does the school district bear the responsibility, according to this policy, of cleaning up after the animal. Um, that is the disabled student who has to make sure that those accommodations are met. Okay, um, so that's a first read. If there are no further questions, let's move on. We have um, the IHAJ, which is a social networking policy. Again, this is a first read. Um, and um, and I'd like to actually get to the next two policies. Um, so I want to move it up. So let's go ahead and talk about policy JLCE. That is our emergencies policy. I talked to uh, Mr. Um, Blasblog about this, as well as our our district doctor and our district nurse, and they were. Um, both approved the changes, and when I talked to Mr. Blasblog, this is what he basically said, this is what he was looking for, and that we are now in compliance with state law. So if there's... That's um, relief. Um, Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, no, all this... All, we, the JLCE, we are. Oh, I'm this sorry. Is, this I'm is sorry. a change. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. All right. Um, policy BE. We've had this on our agenda before. You can see the changes 
that were discussed in the committee. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Mr. Mudge. I'm going to say something simple. Why, why, why are we amending this policy? We're amending the policy to go with state law. State law no longer requires us to advertise in the newspaper, and so that's why we're amending the policy. Um, we were also amending um, okay. to comply with that. Um, the clerk was added because that is what we do and that is what is required. Uh, the electronic section was being added since that's what we have been um, doing. doing, and we've been talking about switching to it since um, we got the iPads. The um, part to take out about the citizens' comments we realized um, were incongruent with what we, a different policy that we, or a different part of the policy we adopted before, and so we, um, we wanted to make sure that the policy read well. Well. Let's go to your first comment, is that, is that we don't have to, okay, you know, we can, we, we can advertise, okay, in, in the paper. And, and, you know, the state law doesn't say we can't. So if we still wanted to advertise in the paper, and there's some of us that think maybe we should, that it's, it's an option that we could carry out and implement and not violate any law, okay? We, we do have, um, we are in the, the community section of the paper, not the full agenda, but um, in a number of the papers basically have us in the community section as to the time and place of our meetings. Well, I understand, but it's not in, you know, it's not in the, the really the things that is independent of the standards, it's, you know, distributed, okay? Uh, Regarding the regarding the uh, the, uh, the comments about uh, the electronics, you know, this is a terrible terrible situation, and this is going on for nine months. You know, the former superintendent of schools bought iPads without permission from the school committee, and suddenly, you know, we're on iPads, and we we can't get copies of the uh, school committee meeting minutes, okay, or agendas as we had and was, we were obligated to get in accordance with our current policy. Our current policy, we have been violating for nine months, ten months. So this codifies the fact that, you know, we've been not following our, our own school committee policy, and the purpose was, in my humble opinion, okay, and which is also incorrect in here, is that I would ask our legal opinion to find out if we are required, a member is required to have a computer, to have an internet service, or even to be computer literate, which this in insinuates that they are. So this insinuates that, you know, you have to have computer service at your house to run for public office, okay? It's to run for public office. And uh, in terms of that, Okay, that's not a requirement to run for public office. And the policy was clear before, okay, it was to be delivered. Okay, and it had been delivered for 50 years to each member as the town council's agendas are delivered. And they are still delivered today with correspondence. Mrs. Avanzato. The, yeah, the act I, is, I haven't yes. finished yet. Okay. Unfortunately, I think this was a vengeful act against Mrs. Benson okay because of political issues and that her being 80 years old okay she no longer could oh, you know she had to drive to the school department to pick up or a town or a school department to pick up her uh, or school building to pick up her her agenda and at the time you know i thought it was wrong i still think it's wrong and i personally feel that we should get the agendas delivered to us uh, as required by the previous policy all right. I will say that the agendas are mailed to Mrs. Benson. Linda. Very quickly, two things. One, we're trying to save money. That is the sole reason for taking the advertisements out of the newspaper, not because we're hiding anything. I think the whole town knows we that. need here. I didn't Excuse say that. me. Point of order. May I please be allowed to finish my comments? Finish. Cost is an issue. We have Patch now. We have other online and other resources, and I think the town knows where to find us and when. Um, 
So I think we need to, and it's quite expensive to advertise in the newspaper, number one. In terms of the delivery of, we have bent over backwards pretty much for everyone. And the reason why we stopped the delivery is because pe we were taking minibuses and driving to every person's house to drop off our packets. That is inefficient. That costs money for the taxpayers. And in deference to knowing um, Mrs. Benson's age and that she didn't want electronic, which I support. I don't think every member should be forced to use electronics. I don't believe that should happen, and no one's done that. We are wasting money, actually, giving people paper packets, but if they want it, I think they should be allowed to have it. That's my position. Policy. And this policy still it, allows for that, by the way. This policy still allows for that as well. But my point is no one was trying to keep Mrs. Benson from everything. In fact, we said we came up with a hybrid opportunity for her. I didn't. Someone did. I guess the superintendent or Ms. Page, she was in charge of getting the agenda. I didn't know this was happening, but they told Mrs. Benson, come to the school right down the street from your house and pick it up there so we don't have to have, because we have buses that go there. That way we don't have to have a minibus go to your house. But well, why didn't we discuss it back in December? Yeah, let Mrs. It's a procedural, procedural issue. Floor. The superintendent runs the school district. We should allow the superintendent to run the school district. I do not want to micromanage every facet of this Organization. I don't get paid to do it. And I don't intend to do it. Oh. But Mr. Cerisi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, a couple of quick points. We used to spend tens of thousands of dollars a year advertising jobs in the Projo. We no longer do that. We save a substantial amount of money now doing it through School Spring um, without a glitch. We spend thousands of dollars of money advertising meetings in the papers. Um, as Mrs. Page mentioned, we're still, our meeting date and time will still be posted in the paper, just not the full agenda. The full agenda is accessible online or by coming in the office or by going to the library, coming into the office online, and nobody's being required to have any electronics. What I'll say bluntly is those knuckleheads down at the General Assembly finally passed a bill that allowed us to save a few bucks and not be mandatory advertisement in the newspaper. So I am going to make a motion to call the question, please. Second. Good. Okay. We have a motion Good. on the floor to call the question. Good. Um, roll call vote, please. Well, this is a codification of the no, There's a motion on the floor to call the question. Call the question. Call the question. Call the question. Kimberly Page. Yes. Joe Thompson. Yes. Richard Welsh. Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. Larry Cerise. Yes. William Mudge. No. Okay. Go ahead and call the question, please, of approval of BE. Joe Thompson. Yes. Richard Welsh. Yes. Linda Avanzato. Yes. Elboy comes out here. Larry Cerise. Yes. William Mudge. No. Move to adjourn. Page. Yes. The the only thing I will ask the committee is um, we also have the maintenance truck replacement. Is that something you want to do tonight, or is that no. something you want to do at the next meeting? We can wait on that. Okay. All right. A second of Joe's motion. Okay, so we have a motion to adjourn. All those um, in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Our, can I shut off the microphones, please?